welcome guys um, and gals and nays and whatever you are. <laughs> <laughs> we got um, Brian Shaw. If you don't know who he is, I mean, he's a, he's a mountain of a man, uh, but twice as big of a, as a heart. You know, your heart is huge, man. You're, you're just one of the nicest humans I've ever been around. And when I say that, like, uh, you know, you look at you, you're like, this guy's probably a fucking, you know, a grizzly bear, you know, like, but you're just like the, one of the kindest souls I've ever been around. And I like, I really appreciate you as a human Thank being. You. Thank you, man. I'm but, glad to be here. This is going to be fun, man. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, sure. I'm looking forward to, to picking your brain. I got a bunch of questions from guys. Um, if you guys don't know who Brian is, um, he's the strongest man on earth, uh, four time world strongest man. And just all around badass. And uh, the way that we've got introduced to each other was uh, through my strength coach, Lauren Landau, who is um, getting you, helping you get ready for a fight. Yeah, man, it's 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 kind of crazy how how the the dots connect. Yeah, you know when when you start going through life, doors open, you walk through those doors, and then a lot of times, I feel like good people connect with good people. Right, right. So it's it's kind of like this path, and I feel like this is very much what has happened you know, right now with Lauren and Lauren actually knew, uh, Joe Ken, who was, um, he was the Woolies, the Panthers head strength coach for a number of mm -hmm. years, but I worked underneath him when he was at Arizona state, right when I got out of college. So it was kind of one of these things where I started talking about this and he's like, Oh, you got to talk to Lauren. And then it was ironic because Lauren knew Cody and Vinny yeah. and it, it just like this puzzle fit together and then Lauren was like, oh, we got it. We got to talk to Derek, man. And it Derek's was going to be fun. And not to cut you off, but it was perfect timing for me because I was like, I was dealing with this, like this void, right. Coming out of the NFL. And when I talk about the, that void, it's like, it's this physical void of like, man, I've really missed the physical. When people ask me, what do you miss most? I missed the locker room, which I get from hunt camps and stuff like that. You know, I can get that feeling, you know, but what I really miss the most is the physicality being physical, and like really having to grind to get, you know, grinding through some stuff and like manhand, like get manhandled and manhandling some, you know, and wrestling around and fighting and, and that stuff. And that stuff is like invaluable. Most people don't get that because a lot of people don't work or that's not their work, you know? Absolutely. But when it's your work to be that and do that and then it's gone, it's tough. So it, it came at like the perfect time for me because I was, I was, you know, I was dealing with a lot of like the mental health side of it was like, what do I do? You know, I just, Absolutely. I was having like, it wasn't like an identity crisis more. It was more like a, uh, like I, I felt like, what is my purpose? You know? For sure. Yeah. Like, I, well, I was, I was about to experience that, I think, because I had basically called my shot on retirement. So, you know, 2023, this was my last year actively competing. And so my last pro contest was in August. And then this got thrown in my direction. I was like, well, I didn't know how I was going to shift my training. I didn't know where I was going to go. And this is a, a different way to train, obviously, a new challenge. Yeah. So I got to close that chapter, jump straight into this in a way without taking much downtime. So I was I was already starting to process what what I was going to do, but but that void, a lot of people I don't think will understand. No, they, they, don't, they don't get it. Yeah. And when, when I first retired, though, like, because I retired, 2022 was my, or, yeah, 2021 was my last season. Uh, so 2022 was my first, like, fall that I got to go hunt, right? So I just dove into that, like, right, head first dove into Jump it. into it, yeah. And it was like, I think I think it was, I know it was really hard on my family because, um, and I'm seeing the effects of it now, like, with my daughter, because I, I did, I dove straight into it. Instead of, like, there was no predictability of when I was going to be here and when I was going to be gone. It was like, hey, see you later. And I was basically gone all of September. Sure. Right? And then it's like, Oh, okay. You know, then I was gone all of November and then it was yeah. like, well, then I just kept, cause I was like, so I was so like hyper-focused on it because I'm used to being hyper-focused on chasing quarterbacks and totally. you know, the game yeah, yeah. and yeah. you know, what's going on with the season and how are we going to win? Are we going to lose? Like what's going on? What team am I going to be on? Like sure that, and when I was gone, I hyper-focused on the hunting. Right. And I see that with my daughter, like the, the separation anxiety started to come out and I was like, oh, okay. I got to reel this back in and do something that's more, um, you know, something, something I could, I could still do the hunting, but I have to do it in a way that's like planned out. And it's so, so that's not a good outlet for me to like rely on all the time. Right. Makes sense. So yeah, this yeah. is a, this, this, and like, we've talked about doing jujitsu and this and that, like it creates like a little tribe, you know, Absolutely. and that's where you can get that. And you're holding each other accountable. And there's like, you know, 
you know, you might, you don't have to compete, but, um, we talked about how important competition was for men. Yes. Right? yes. How we have to like, as if you're an alpha or like any type of man, <laughs> Big you, time. you yes. want to conquer something. Absolutely. Like you have yeah. to, there's gotta be something to conquer. Yep. Right. And I think that's like, I think that's a problem in society right now yep. is that like men don't have that outlet. Little, even little boys, they'll just quickly diagnose these little boys. I'm not a doctor, but they'll quickly diagnose these little boys with ADHD or, oh, he's just a bad kid or he's, you yeah. know, he's too wound up. He's too aggressive. Well, boy, little boys and men and all through, you're supposed to be being physical and going to battle and uh, conquering things. And I'm not talking about like going out and raping and pillaging like a Viking. You know, no, I'm talking no, about yeah, like yeah. setting a goal and conquering that goal. Right. Yeah. And then and fighting through some adversity and things like that. I think a lot of these kids, they don't have that. Yeah. Um, and, and then especially these gr grown men now, like they've yeah. literally been castrated basically. And they just, they, they go it's, home, they, they go to work, they come home, they go to work, they come home. And then they, you know, they drink a, uh, a whole case of beer on the weekend and sit in their garage. And then, yeah. and then they can repeat that cycle until they die. Yeah. And it's, that's just like, I don't want everyone to be that way. It's, I think, I think you're hitting the nail on the head with, it's a big problem. It's mm -hmm. a big problem in society. And, and there's. So I suppose a lot of different ways we could go with talking about that, but men need challenge. Yeah. They need challenge and you should, as a man, you know, I think that men should be capable of violence. Mm -hmm. I very much believe that in my core. Right. So yeah. like, I, I think that this is something, you know, for me, and I actually was having this conversation with my wife a little bit more, where, okay, I've certainly walked around being big and strong, and I felt very capable in handling whatever situation I was in. But now that I've gone through this, <laughs> like we've we've added a whole nother layer to, I said to her, I said, you know, I can now look at a situation and know with absolute certainty that I can handle it, whatever level it goes to, right? And not that I didn't before, but I like that I've challenged myself in this way where I feel very comfortable with, with anything that were to happen. And I like that. Right. And I like that challenge, but I think men, you know, if you talk about that, you know, my sons are, are a prime example. My youngest would be exactly who you're talking about. Right. Like he's, you know, very hyper hard, you know, his, his doesn't want to focus on something. He wants to be aggressive. He wants to, you know, and I have two boys and it's inter interesting seeing them interact in different ways. So we put him in wrestling, mm. right? It's a perfect thing. And, and you know, his, his thing to me is, and he doesn't understand what he's saying, of course, right? He's five, he's going in there and he's going against, you know, now he's kind of in the, in the, you know, seven or eight year old class and he's five years old, but. <laughs> Cause he's probably a giant. He's pretty big. <laughs> he's yeah. Pretty big kid. Um, but you know, it's one of those things where like he turned around and said to my wife and this kind of came out of nowhere, but he's like, Hey, I'm ready to crush some bones, like going into <laughs> wrestling, right? And I'm like, wow, dude, okay, like whatever. Yeah, but it's a good outlet, you know? Yeah. And again, I want I want as as a dad to challenge them to grow up to be men, yep. right? Like I want them to be men. I want them to be able to protect. I want them to be able to provide. I want them to know what that is and what that means, yeah. right? That's really important, I think. Now, this society that we're living in where we demonize masculinity, we demonize being a man, is wrong. And yeah, I, totally. I, I, could, I could not disagree with that more because you have to have that capability. And then it goes back to a man should be capable of violence. Now, should you be violent all the time? No, no. right? You should be civilized. But if it comes to that, you should be capable of it, right? And that's the that's where men being men need to understand that, right? Like if, if you get in my bubble, we have a problem, yeah. right? So it's kind of this type of thing. And most people should understand that. And I feel like for years and years, people have understood that because men were capable of that. But now we've got a society where that's being demonized and it's and, and if somebody does it, now you're talking about, okay, well, you hurt my feelings. You hurt this, you hurt that. Uh, yeah, they're offended. It's, it's so wrong. It's, it's so, so wrong. wrong. And we're, go we're going in this direction. So, you know, I think that the thing, the thing that's, that's very important, I think, for dads out there is to be present, number one. Yeah. And, you know, to, to be a part of that growth, especially for young men, but women too, because the thing is now – like you have a daughter, like she's going to be strong too, right? And yeah. she's going to be capable in her own way. 
but it's it's one of these things where you know there's there's this difference and obviously we're going down more the the you know male side of it where there's just a difference and and there's like a man needs to be able to step up in certain ways mm-hmm. and you have to understand that yeah. right and it needs to be okay and and society you know whether mm-hmm. whatever they they say they being this very very small very small but very loud yeah part of society that that you should not care what they say, right? No, you shouldn't. Right, and you so really it's, it's being being okay with that, and and you know, I think that there's several situations over the past few years where you have to be okay with saying no, and you have to be okay with standing your ground. Yeah. you know, and it's, that's it's very important. It's I think it's really important. It's and being able to protect yourself and your family, you know, is 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 really important. Just I can't imagine. I'm, I'm going to hit on this real quick because I want to back. I want to I want to go back to something real quick, but. I can't imagine being one, being a guy that's out with his family and just like something happens and I don't, I can't help protect them at all. Not good. Right. Like I, I just can't imagine that. Like, no. yeah, I, yeah. If somebody holds me at gunpoint, you know, that's one thing, but I'll die before I let somebody take my kids or take my family. Like, you'll have to kill me. 100%. Um, so you have to be prepared to kill me to, to do that. But yeah. if, if we're in a physical hand to hand battle, I know that I can handle myself in that. Yeah. You know, because, it, because it's, a, I think it's important to do that. And I know I can do it under control. Right. And, and that, and that, like you said, it doesn't mean we have to be violent all the time. Right. Nope. I'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Yeah. I love that. I love like, that. That's, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but I want to backtrack to, you know, for the people that are listening that don't know your story. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's yeah. just do a real quick, like, let's walk it through, like start at high school, right? Like sure. go from high school to college and then how we got here. Just run through it quick. Yeah, man. So I, growing up, I, I mean, I played a lot of sports. And, and you grew up here in Colorado, I right? did. I did, yeah. So I grew up in Fort Lupton. Um, and I, I loved competition. I just loved being competitive. I loved winning. So, you know, I kind of was, I feel like the last maybe era where they actually kept score and you got, a, you know, for first place, you got a blue ribbon, right? It wasn't everybody got participation stuff. They started to implement some of that kind of crap a little bit with me. And then it was more like after me, they started with that nonsense, yeah. which is a whole different conversation. But, um, you know, you, I go through and I, I, my first love was basketball. I fell in love mm-hmm. with basketball, pri- probably because in my hometown, the basketball team was the team, right? right? So the whole town went to the basketball games. I remember going as a kid and they were better so it's one of those things where my my uncle was a basketball coach as well. So I kind of naturally went in that direction, and I, I I genuinely loved it. I loved that I could practice on my own. I loved that I could get better, whatever. So, you know, I set a goal of playing in college, um, getting a scholarship, whatever. So I was able to do that. So I played in college. Where'd you go to school? Um, so I played two years of JUCO ball actually here in Colorado. And then transferred to South Dakota to Black Hill State is where I went. Nice. So it, it was great, man. Got school paid for um, and, and had that challenge. But through that process, for me, I was big and athletic, but I needed to I needed to find the weight room to, to develop that more so mm-hmm. that I was able to actually have the opportunity to play. So that's where I fell in love with training in the weight room because it was mm-hmm. like, hey, I go in here, I see a result. I get faster, I can jump higher, you know, all this, all these good things are happening and I, I feel better about myself. So my confidence grows and it was just a great cycle for me to get into. And so I, I grew with that. And then I would say kind of my last probably, probably year or two of college, I started to not like basketball as much as I liked lifting. Yeah. Right. So I would go in, in the off season and put on let's just say 20, 30 pounds, whatever. And I was really happy because I felt really good. And then you go in the season, then you've got individual workouts and you got team workouts. So you got conditioning, you got all this stuff going on. And I would start to drop weight and not like it that much, yeah. you know? And, you know, <laughs> my coach up there wasn't a great guy either. So that, that I think led to me not liking the game as much. Yeah, um, I get that. You know, and, and so when I got done um, with college, I had – a little bit of an opportunity to potentially try to play overseas a little bit, but I was like, you know what? Like, I just don't want to go down that path. I want to be a strength coach and because I, the weight room's done so much for me, I want to kind of teach other athletes how to use that to get better and to increase their performance. So that's the route that I kind of went down, but kind of that void that we were talking about earlier that came with not competing. I didn't have anything to compete. in, so it's like, I'm going in the weight room and lifting to get stronger and, and feeling good. But I couldn't compete and I needed to compete. Mm -hmm. Like I just needed that outlet. So that's when 
I found Strongman because I was like, well, I've seen this stuff on TV, whatever. You know, it seems like great because I like can go in the weight room and train and then I get to line up and compete against somebody and see who's better, who's stronger, who can lift more, who can carry something faster. And how did you, how did you like find it? You know, like how did it? Well, I, I just search it out. Like I didn't know there wasn't a lot of, about it. And there wasn't here in Colorado, especially there really wasn't any gyms where you go and can try this stuff. It was, there was a couple and I drove to them, but really I um, kind of had to create my own path to be fair. So it was like, I had a guy welding some equipment out of a garage for me because I couldn't afford anything, <laughs> yeah. nothing. Right. So it was like some scrap metal, let's make it into this or that. And then I would go train really like kind of by myself. And then I would, it was all trial and error. Like, Hey, this works, that doesn't work. And then you go enter a contest. So I found one here in Colorado and, and went and entered it. And then I went to New Mexico and did one there. And then I like took off and I was trying to kind of scale up quickly because you go and I was winning those first ones pretty easily just because I was big and strong and athletic and it was easy. It came very easily. Like, yeah, but natural. some of these events, I wasn't, I wasn't experienced at all. You know, you're just walking in there. It's the first time I touched a lot of the stuff was in the contest, Yeah, which is weird. Now a lot, of, I'll say that to a lot of people or people get into the sport because it's more accessible, but I really had to create my own, uh, journey, I guess. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, come up with the equipment, come up with the ways to train, uh, go and, and almost like a trial and error type of deal. And then I would, I would go and I would say, Hey, this worked, that didn't work. Let's get better at this. And so having the background in strength and conditioning helped as well, because I was able to decipher that a little bit, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where it was just something I fell in love with. I really did. Like at the beginning, I loved it because the only person I could look at if I either was successful or I failed was me. So I'd have to look in the mirror and say, all right, yeah. I, I have to do better. I have to There's get no better. There's no one to blame. I love yourself. it. I love that. So, you know, of course, you know, as things develop, you train with a group and it, it is somewhat of a team aspect in training. But once the contest starts, you walk out there, you have to perform. The team can't do it. Mm -hmm. You have to do it. So... I just love that. And then I just kept progressing and working my way up. And there's just different levels within Strongman. And you go to a bigger contest and you do good there. And it opens a door to get to the next thing. And you keep keep doing good and eventually get to the top level. So do you have to get invited to to the like the world's strongest man like competition? Is there like a is there like districts and finals? So and this and that? Like, I mean, there's never really been a clear route. There wasn't really a clear, clear route uh, for me. There's used to be something called the super series and that's actually how I qualified to start with, but they do do invitations outside of that. So they do have some qualifiers that happen. So if you go to those qualifiers and you place top three or top four, that'll be your direct spot in Okay. Um, to world's strongest man. But a lot of the other contests uh, that I did that are at the top level are invitational so you do good enough and then you get your invite. Invited, so, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you can, you can go that route, but, um, you know, I had somebody tell me early on, if you're good enough, you can compete wherever you want to compete. Just kick the right? door down. Yes. So you <laughs> yeah. keep winning, you're undeniable now. Right. right. So that's kind of my, that was always my mindset because, you know, when I got into the sport, there was a little bit of a separation between, um, there was this federation called IFSA. And they ran their own world championship and then World Strongest Man ran theirs. But if you did IFSA, you couldn't do World Strongest Man. So I actually oh, wow. first qualified for IFSA, the IFSA World Championships, turned it down, and then I went and qualified for World Strongest Man to go there. So you know, was there like some doubt in your mind? Were you like, man, I don't know if I should turn this down? Well, Am I making a mistake? Like, I had, I was had that. In, no, I mean, I had the invite. I actually went back and told some people. Here, like, oh, I qualified for IFSA World Championships. And they're like, what the hell is IFSA World Champ? What is that? You know, and I was like, well, that, in my mind, I could go win that and be the world champion there. But nobody knows. But, but I need, I want to do um, something with a bigger title. Like, yeah. So I, I went that route. And, you know, at the time, smart. it was smart because the guys, that was in 2007, and the guys actually didn't get paid. So they, they folded that year. So the year that I would have went to that, I would have, no matter how well I would have done, I would have not got paid and they folded. So it, was, it actually, in hindsight, was a very good choice. Um, but I didn't know at the time that that was going to happen. Right. So, you know, you, you choose your route. But, you know, like I said, again, if you're that good, it doesn't really matter. Like, you're, you'll become undeniable. You'll get your spot and you'll be a, a mainstay at the top contest. Now, 
is that easy to do? No, it's not easy to do because you have to get to that level and then be consistent. No, nothing's easy go. about the f- shit no. that you're doing. Like no, none of that is easy. Yeah. So, I mean, getting, getting to that level is hard. Staying there is even harder. Um, and staying there for a very long time is, is even harder. Just very much, I'm sure, like the NFL, right? Like you could have a guy have a great season and then they fall down and they don't, you know. They never, they never, yeah. well, well, the next, what happens a lot in the NFL, well, before we get to that, the, what, the, what goes on in the league, because it is kind of similar, but um, I want to get to one of our first listener questions. Um, this is from uh, David Z. Guardo. Guardado one. Guardado one. Perfect. So David Z. Guardado one. I think you said that perfect. I think I did. I think I crushed <laughs> Nailed it. it. Nailed, Nailed it. it. Nailed it. <laughs> Third time, got it. Yeah. Uh, but he said, uh, and we talked about this, uh, could you have seen yourself playing in the NFL if you hadn't done strongman? And what position do you think you would have played? <sighs> so I actually, and I told you this, I, I actually tried when I got done with basketball, and I had an agent that was real excited about it, and I did all the you know, kind of combine tests so he could take that and talk to teams, whatever. But the problem was, is I had not played football, right? So exactly. I didn't know the game. I didn't, and the speed, you know, like I, I know within basketball, the higher level you get, the faster the game moves, the more you have to identify what's going to happen. And that's, the, that's the piece of the puzzle that I didn't have. Right. So that, and that yeah. was like, he couldn't get an open door with anybody. Because I, of the I almost, I, I know that we look at that as a negative, but I almost think it could be actually in your favor it could because you don't have anything to refer it to that's just how it is to you sure like the first time you step out there and you feel the speed of it you're like oh this is just how it is yeah it's not like you played in high school you know and i don't know what did you guys have a big high school that where you went to like did you have like a because i know a lot of schools here play like six man and sure set five man like what yeah, Eight man I mean, football uh, and shit, yeah. you know? The, my, like I said, my high school team was not good. They were not good at football. The guys really treated it not seriously They didn't take it all. serious. And that was hard for me, bro. It was really hard for me because they, the coaches were like well, you beg, win. begging me to play. Yeah. Literally begging me. And, and I think they won four games my four years of high school. Yeah, see, Did you go they, to Central or did you go to Fort Lupton? Fort Lupton, yeah. So they stink? Yeah, it, w- it was not good. <laughs> it's three A, right? Three A Patriot. So we League? were we were four A when I was there. They, they may have transferred to three A now. I'm not sure, but um, yeah. The thing is, is like I'm too competitive. Even back then, I was way too competitive. So the guys would not take it seriously or skip practice or whatever. Oh, see, like, no, you don't. I had a hard time. Well, that's where I think I think if because you would have been introduced to the weight room so much sooner. Yes, than you yeah. than you did. And I think you would have been like, in my opinion. You're like a natural offensive lineman. Like See, you I would think, have been fucking phenomenal. I think like that would have been an interior good, like, yeah. guard, like a fucking offensive guard. Yeah. Because people don't wait till people see how you move on your feet. Yeah. Like to see a 400 pound motherfucker move around like he does, it's like, dude, it's impressive as hell. It would have been the thing is, it would have been fun for sure. But what I will say is, in, in hindsight, right? Because I think that's where things become more clear. I, I think there's a reason that the door didn't open like that. And that's, oh, that's what I believe. Right. Yeah, But because you, and you left, you left your legacy is so much bigger than maybe if you, cause who knows you could have met, you would have got, maybe you're a first round draft pick. You go sure. to some big school, you're a first round draft pick. Um, you end up not studying strength and conditioning sure. and you just work out just, you, you love, you know, training and working out. But once you're done with like, dude, there's no way that I could go into being a strong man right now. Like yeah. my body will not allow me to like load my spine. Like Just from anymore. getting beat up. Because yeah, of the yeah. impact and the injuries and the joints, my joints are all fucked up. Sure. Like I would never be able to do that. So you like to me, dude, like I'm almost, I'm envious of sure. the life that you've created for yourself because it is, in, and I say that in a good way. Yeah. Like, uh, like it's not like, Oh, I'm jealous. Like, uh, you know, no, 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 I'm envious yeah. of like, I think it's so cool to me how you, you took like you were playing basketball. Okay. Like you just moved on to the next thing and then you sure. kept working. You moved on to the next thing. And yep. and now you are literally like, you can't think, you don't think of world's strongest man and not think of Brian Shaw. Yeah. It's like, it's you don't fun, think man. your name is that's like, like when somebody says the NFL, well, who's the first name that pops to your head? Well, you're probably going to go to Tom Brady or Peyton Manning or somebody, you know, there's a like, ton of names, right? Sure. Sure. I can't like, and I watched this, the strong man stuff, the world's yeah. strongest man growing up. I still can't. The only name that I know is Brian Shaw. See, that's like, that's all, where your, well, le- your legacy is there. But like, yeah. um, what's the most anybody's ever won? 
World Strongest Man is five times. Right. Pujanowski. Um, I remember so, Pujanowski when yeah, I was a yeah. kid. Yeah. Most most people do, and he had a crazy physique, which helped a lot with like the the remembering part, I think. And also, well, he was doing well, man. He was doing really yeah. well. But that's actually like that happened during that split, right? So that a lot of the top athletes actually left to IFSA. So within the sport of strongman. If you were to ask somebody at that time, where are the stronger athletes? Well, the stronger athletes went to IFSA. Why? Because all the guys were offered contracts. More money. Yep. So yeah. you have a guaranteed contract, then you get prize money, whatever, where World Strongest Men did not have that at all, right? So it's arguable whether Pujanowski would have won five had the best guys not left. Yeah, we have this so same conversation in the NFL about like um, – the the way that they change the rules with like hitting people and stuff Bro, and I, how you can take I quarterbacks bet that down. You crazy, yeah. Oh, it makes yeah. me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like the way they change yeah. the rules. Like uh, when they changed the no landing on the quarterback rule, that season I missed seven sacks. Like had the quarterback wrapped up and didn't know what to do. Yes. Because how? What do I always say when we're in the gym? The yeah. more you think, the less effective you're going to be. Absolutely. Right? Like, you just need to be. Able to I play never the game. wanted to think. Like once I got my hands on a guy, mm-hmm. I didn't want to think. Oh, I gotta set him down, or I gotta like sure. don't land on. No, it was like I I was like, it's in my DNA to like bury this dude into right? the ground, yeah, right? Yeah. Like that's how I was taught to. Well, do that's it. the game of football. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That I think it's I think it's um, dude, I think it's so interesting. It's so cool. Yeah. What you what you've done, and now that now and now that you've you're done with with competing, sure. Now you've created your own show. Yeah. Right. Your own competition, that um, which I thought was awesome to see you compete like that. You competed in your own. So I started, yeah, that I started in 2020. Yeah. Right. So what happened with that was everything got shut down because of all the bullshit. Yep. And I, I said, I got to do something. That's basically what I said. So I said, look, I have, I have my gym in Brighton. I have a mountain gym. I'm going to clear those out and I'm going to fly the guys out here. I'm going to put up the prize money. I'm going to do it. Like, we'll just have people there. We'll film it. We'll put it out. We'll make it, make it work. And so that's that's the nature of what that started. And and you know, at that time it was you couldn't have more than what was the stupid rule, six people or something around or eight, ten people together. And and they, the guys literally were calling me and they're like, What if what if they show up? And I said, Well, if they show up, then we'll deal with it. But I'm not getting stopped, right? Like we're doing this. And it, it basically come in here and against, try to stop us. Literally. <laughs> literally, literally the yeah, strongest yeah. men on the planet. No, it's, come and try to stop us. <laughs> we're making it happen. So we made it happen, man. We made it happen. It was like one of those things where, you know, I'm really proud of that because it was my way to fight back. Yeah. Right. Like, and it was it was one of these things where, you know, the same it was the same thing, like even with that going on. And I remember the people were, sat down and had a conversation with some guys I had there about wearing masks during the contest and what it would be a good look or something. And I said, I said, no, zero chance. I said, this is my opportunity to fight back against this bullshit. Right. (laughs) And and we put it out like the referees. Take our helmets off. They made, when we came off the sideline. Yeah. No fans in the crowd. Yeah. Right. It's no fans. It's just us out there playing a fucking game. So it feels like practice already. You come off and sit on the bench. You have to take your helmet off and then put a mask on. Get out of here. We were just bleeding and spitting all over each other and shit. Like, like, what the How, fuck are you talking it's, about? It's <laughs> it's propaganda. It's it's nonsense. So, yeah, it was all bullshit. Anyway, we don't have to go there, but um, it was it was a way to fight back. But it was also one of these things where I have wanted for a long time to run something where it's it's by the athletes it's for the athletes and you know i have told the guys for a lot of a lot of years the athletes have a lot of power right so the truth is and this is the game of football this is basketball this is strongman this is anything without the athletes performing you do not have fans sitting in the seats mm-hmm. right so you could have the best organizers or owners or whatever whatever you want right but without the actual athletes performing, the fans don't come. Yeah. And this is this is the simple truth of any sport. So I sa- I've said this to the guys, and and that's essentially the nature of of what we have grown from is that attitude. Like the guys are the most important. We're going to center it around the athletes. We're going to treat them the best way possible. We're going to make it all about them. And then from there, we're also going to care about the fans. And we're also going to care about about you, the way the entire event runs. Yeah. as well right so it's all from that and it's not about coming in greedy 
which, you know, I got to see. I got to see a lot of that throughout my career where it was the promoters take the lion's share of everything mm -hmm. and the athletes get peanuts, yeah. right? And you're supposed to just be happy with what you get. Be and, happy with what you got. And you keep know? your mouth closed and move on. And that's... Because yeah. they, tr they treat you like you're just a big, dumb animal, basically. Like, it's, it's Do what you're told. Here's yes. what you get. Take what you get and yeah. be happy. And there's, there's a certain point where I understand the bottom line and I understand that, you know, very well that events cost a lot of money to put on and... Whatever, I understand that more now probably than ever. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you're not greedy and you go into it for the right reasons, people see it, the athletes see it mainly, right? And and I already had their trust anyway because I've competed with them. I stood up for them in a lot of situations. Well, you're because, a stand-up guy. Yeah, well, I had the – I had – it had to be me, right? Like it had to be me because you walk into a meeting. I mean, there was times at World's Strongest Man where – I literally told the organizers, everybody to get out of the room and I was just going to talk to the athletes, right? So like if we needed to stand together, we're going to stand together. So you right? almost created your own union. Well, there, there is, yes, exactly. <laughs> there is no union, but, but you, you have to have that. You stuck together. And all the guys would, would trusted me because they're like, you know what, Brian's, if Brian says it, we're doing it, right? Because I know he's looking out for our best interests and he's willing to fight it because I also could have been on the other side of the coin and not stood up and for them politics and said, Hey, I'm whatever. I'm the biggest name here. I should get treated like this. I don't care how they get treated. I get treated good. They don't get treated. And a lot good. of guys would have done that. Probably. Massively. There's a lot of yeah, people yeah. that that's naturally how so they are. They look off themselves. It's kind of all of that combined is what we, you know, rolled into. And now, um, you know, I mean, this year, for example, we gave out the second highest prize money ever in the sport. What was it? Two hundred and fifty-three thousand. That's dude. That's something like that. So it was that's fucking incredible like, to come from. But that was a fourth year, fourth year, right? So the you know, which is young. Yeah, but something like World's Strongest Man, I think they give out two hundred and ten total, right? So we're already beat. It. We beat them by forty. And what's the event called? Like, what's the name of the event? So, so the entire weekend is a Shaw Classic, and the the contest is the strongest man on earth. So, and do you do other events there, like other things? like? So we have, yeah, we have a men's open. We have a women's open. This year we ran um, a couple, not a full grip competition, but a couple grip events. And then we actually had some arm wrestling too. So a couple oh, guys yeah. coming in arm wrestling. So it's, it's kind, kind of, of... You know what you need to do is talk to Dana White and get the slap going over there. <laughs> people would, I, I know people Dude, would get into I that. I mean, it's yeah. the same setup as an arm wrestling competition. Yeah, yeah. Like you're just standing up there. there's No, there's equipment needed is not much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's, so, it's, dude, I'm telling yeah. you, like I think, and that, that shit has taken off. Yes. No, it really I, is. And yeah, I'm yeah. sure, I mean, you could definitely get a hold of Dana and get that. Make it happen. Yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's growing. Because I think, because what you, I mean, when I, growing up in Ohio, right, the mm -hmm. Arnold Classic was a big deal. It is. Yeah. Right? yeah in for Columbus, sure. Ohio. Yep. Like, that was a big deal. Yeah. Right. And I'm, I like, there's no doubt in my mind that the Shaw Classic isn't going to become like the, like, I mean, you already got people coming from all over the world. Sure. Bringing them to Colorado. And what part of Colorado is it in? So this is Loveland. So it's, it was uh, formerly the Budweiser Event Center. Now it's it's Blue Arena. So okay. they just sold the rights or whatever. Do you just it. lease the space? <clears throat> awesome. Yep. So we go in there and take the whole that thing is. over. And then we have an expo um, that goes along with it that, you know, so it's really, it's really cool because it's really family friendly. We have a lot of stuff for the kids yeah, to do. And it's a and consumer whatever. event as well, right? Because you it's, have these different um, sponsors and companies that come out there. It's awesome, man. Stuff. Like yeah. th that's yeah. to me, dude. That is, yeah, that it's is so lot. cool. I'm trying to do something like that um, in the hunting industry right now. Is I want to do like my own. Um, um, it's like we're going to call it the the Wolf Jamboree. Okay, the Wolf Lodge Jamboree. So do it up in my lodge. Set up like a 3D archery event. And nice. Have like nice. all the vendors come out and have a concert and. Make it fun. You know sure, what I mean? sure. Uh, set up prizes and stuff. Like, I'd real, like, that's the thing about they have these total archery challenges they do all over the country at these ski hills, but there's no like cash prize for like, sure. the real winner. So, like, I want it to be like a real competition here. Like, that would be cool. You and your boys come out and like team of four and yeah, yeah. score wins, and we'll make it like a real, you know, like there's Absolutely. a real prize there, you know, like sure. you can win 20 grand, 30 grand. On, Absolutely. You know, going out for a weekend and shooting your bow like that. See, that would be cool. That's what I want. That's so that's I'm working on having that ready for August. Nice. We'll see nice. if we can make that happen. Um, but um, before we move on, I want to ask another question. You know, now that we're talking about the strongman stuff, um, what are the most beneficial practices to stay injury free while you're lifting? So because you're lifting so heavy. Sure. And this is coming from J. J. Rob Gear. 
So the big, the biggest thing that you have to do is listen to your body. That's number one. So the training approach, you need to listen, listen to your body and, and know when it's time to push and when it's time to pull back. And that's one of the biggest things you have to learn early on if you want to have longevity, right? So you can yeah. go in and there's a time and a place to push hard, but remembering that you need to be your your best on the contest day, yeah. right? That's when you have to actually perform. It doesn't really matter what you lift in training as long as all of that training is leading up to being the best on that day. So if you learn how to, to listen to your body, you should be able to, and of course, recovery is a part of that and, and you know, making sure that you're not going too heavy too often, like this this type of thing. But having that end goal in mind and then doing all of the training, understanding that the training leading up to it is is leading to that end goal and being the best on that day. So you don't go in and, and never, never did I feel like I had to prove it in training, right? Like I, I didn't walk in the gym and I, I was saying, all right, I have to prove this to myself. You kind of get past that and you know that you do enough hard work and training and you you string enough good days together, good things will happen. And so that's that's really the the key. But listening to your body is probably one of the hardest things to learn, but one of the most beneficial things. Yeah. That was that's I I, I had a feeling that was what you're gonna say is like knowing knowing like, okay, today is probably not a good day for me to fucking yeah. yep. go that heavy because I yeah. just I'm fe- I'm feeling, you know, a little bit weaker today or I'm a little bit tired or I'm a little yes. bit, like something's just off or like all oh, this little, this muscle in my back is a little bit tight. And yeah. um, that was the struggle with the NFL Yeah, is that every fucking day you had to come in there and be at your fucking best, no matter what. Yeah. Because there's a, there's a whole batch of dudes right behind you, right yeah. behind you. Like yeah. they, every year there's a draft and sure. there's a fucking guy that they drafted and he's in yeah. there trying to take your job. Yeah. Um, and th- so it was like this, and it might not even have been a threat. I might have made that up in my head. Right? Sure, like, just to be I, more my competitive. My skill level was yep. so high that maybe I didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. But I that I, it was like a healthy, you know, reminder in the back well, of my head that like I have to fucking yeah. go today. And yeah. and for the fact, the simple fact that everybody's watching you. Yeah. Right. So everybody was always watching to make see how how does he practice? Sure. Right? What is his practice habits like? Yeah. If I don't feel like going. Yeah. to the weight room after like, and I, the weight room's my, that's my church. Like sure. I fucking love lifting yeah. weights. Like I love being in there. Um, it, and I just love it. Like I, and especially when I was like that big, when I was like in college, you know, coming out, sure. I loved being in the weight room. I love was it. strong yeah. as fuck. Like I felt like I was just like this. Sure. I was the strongest kid in college football my senior year. Yeah. That's so awesome. like, it was yeah. like, you know, the numbers were crazy. You know, I, it's probably shit that you train, you just train with. But me, I was hitting like, you know, I was doing like, uh, 675 for sets of sixes on the squats. That's like, awesome. Man. Um, yeah, yeah. Bench pressing 475 for like six, seven reps, you know? Sure. Like I was strong as shit, you know? Yeah. Uh, hang cleaning, you know, 450, 460, 460 pounds. Like I was That's strong. awesome. Yeah, yeah. But like there was no, like, I don't feel like doing it today. Sure. It it's- was like no matter what, everything we did back then was to uh, failure too. So the only reason I know I can do that many reps is because every weight we had done, if I could do it 20 times, I had to do it 20 times. Sure. So like it made me want to go heavier so I could do less reps. So I would try to get to the heaviest point that I could yep. to where I had to, could do less reps because we that was the way we trained. It was stupid. Yep. Um, then we go run 110s, you know, and it was sure. like, <laughs> oh, that's smart. We yeah. just squatted, you know, heavy as shit. Probably now not the best. Know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But that that's where I wish that like as I got older in my career – I would like even try to like plead with coaches, be like, "Look, like I'm not fucking feeling it today. Sure, like, I feel like sure. shit, you know." Yeah, and they'd be like, "Well, I don't go talk to the go to." And if you go to the then then if you go to the training room, the training room then puts you on a protocol, sure. and now you're waking up two hours earlier than you normally would, and you have to go in there and so do you're fucking losing treatment. Sleep so they, and yeah, 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 so you're losing sleep, you're losing time with your kids, you're losing yeah. time with your family, and uh, that that okay. Now we're gonna ask another question here okay. because um, now that we're talking about injuries and stuff, okay. so what was uh, this is coming from D. Jones, PA Southpaw. Um, he says uh, he he wants to know what's what what's your worst injury while being in strongman and how long was the recovery? And I think I know so which the, one you're going to say. So the the worst worst injury directly from strongman was uh, detaching my bicep. So that was uh, we were, we had an axle, kind of like a big train axle, yeah. that we were um, had to clean to our shoulders. And it was a clean only. Typically, that event is done for a clean and press. But for whatever reason, that's a whole 
different topic, but they, they did a clean only, which is very, very stupid. Still one of the stupidest events I've ever been involved in, um, in the sport. But I was really, really, really pissed off that year that they put the, that event in because they took out the Atlas stone <clears throat> and the, the stone is something I was at that point, I was unbeatable at that. I was just, I was so f- miles ahead of everybody on that. So and, the Atlas stones, <clears throat> you carry it, right? So you, so you load it, it, load it over a bar. So okay. just really, really heavy. So every year at the Arnold, this was um, an event that they had was a manhood stone. And every year they would set the bar a little bit higher. They would increase the weight of the stone a little bit more. So you're walking in setting a new world record for the heaviest stone lifted. And then you do it for reps basically. <laughs> but I was at that point, I was training above, uh, above the world record weight and training for reps. So it was something that I was like, <laughs> it was a good event and they pulled it. Yeah. They pulled it out of the contest and put this in. So it really pissed. Do you think they did that just because there was, it wasn't a competition. That's bullshit 100%. though. It was, well, that's it, absolute it's, a whole, trash. it's, it was, it was, it was really, <laughs> to be fair, they, yeah, it pissed me off too. So I trained this Axel clean only stupidly admittedly, and this is going back to the other question, not listening to your body, right? I was not listening to my body, but I was training in a rage mm-hmm. um, for that event. So I was cleaning that axle. I, like I thought at one point I had broke my sternum because um, you, you clean this thing and set it. How kind of much does it weigh? So in the contest was uh, four, 460 for reps. Mm-hmm. So you, you do it and I go to the contest. So you're just seeing how many times you can get it up to your shoulders. Exactly. Yep. So you're yeah. deadlifting it, rolling it up. Well, you pick it, like kind of pull it really explosively up to your upper abdomen and then set it there, transition up to your shoulders. And then typically you would press that. <laughs> but again, with this event, that wasn't a thing. Because so. they just wanted to have big, heavy axles. So was I, it like a train axle or train, something? Train, yeah. yeah. So non-revolving. So not like a normal bar. So the big wheels on the outside, don't they don't revolve. Right. right? So it's, it's much harder to get up there. Anyway, so I, I train my whole training cycle. Um, I'm doing like, I was capable of five, like five to the shoulders. And I wanted to make that a point because they took out my best event, which was stones to put this in. So I was like, all right, if you're going to do that, I'm going to dominate this I'm gonna, too. Exactly. So I, I <laughs> had that mindset. I walk out there for the contest. It was first event of the contest, first rep of the, that event. I, I pull it up and, and it felt like, um, like a, like a cattle prod like that, yeah. but it was like a bing, 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 like real real strong, you know, and I, I didn't realize what had exactly happened, but I pulled it up anyway and I finished the rep, put it back down and then like obviously bicep is detached. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to flip my grip over, which is really stupid. Ugh. And I tried to do it again. I couldn't do it. And so I walked off, but like the thing, the thing, and this is a difference with me that a lot of people I don't, I don't think realize like mentally I had trained to compete, right? So I'm not, I don't stop. I'm not stopping. Like I, like most guys, if not all guys, first event of the contest, that happens, biceps torn off, they're done, right? They well, hang it up, yeah. walk away, whatever. So I walk back at a guy with me, um, one of my training partners. I was like, look, pull out another elbow sleeve. I'm not going to take this one off. I'm going to put that on top because I had to do a, a dumbbell event. So this big circus dumbbell. So you have to put both hands on it, clean it up to your shoulder and press and it. Press, yeah. So I was like, that's the second event that day. So I was like, I'm going to put that elbow sleeve on. I'm going to go do that. Then we'll go figure out what the hell happened to my arm. I said, I know something happened, but I'm like, right now I'm not going to look at it. I don't want to, I don't give a shit. So I'm going to throw that on. We'll go do it. Go do that event. I got second place in that event um, <laughs> and then go and I see the, the, you know, ortho. With no fucking bicep. Yeah. And he's checking, he's checking me out and he was like, he's like, well, he's doing all the tests. He's like, all right well, you've, you've definitely detached your bicep off, right? It's, it's gone. And so I say back to him, so but again, all rolled up here. yeah, it, like the, there's a gap, like it just pulled up. And so I said back to him, I said, all right, cool. So can I compete? <laughs> right. So like, what are you saying? And he's like, he looked, I remember, never forget the look in his face. Like, he's just like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I just told you, <laughs> you tore your bicep off. And he's, he literally said back to me, he said, well, technically you can't tear it again. <laughs> So it's up to you. Like, if you want to go, you go. And I said, cool, that's all I need to hear. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to sleep on it, wake up the next day, and we'll figure out what the hell can happen. Like, so I warm up, get going, do the next event, do the next event. And I actually went in to the final event um, that year and tied for second place. So if I won this last event, I would win the contest, right? And 
So it was, it was good, but the, that was a frame carry. So you hop inside this big wooden frame and it's got handles inside. You pick it up and go up this ramp. Now, that uh, mentally for me was like one of those things where I knew how much it was going to suck because you're pulling so hard. Like you're just, I mean, it's just going to put so much pressure there. Yeah. So I had to just zone out in my head. I do that frame carry. I got about three quarters of the way up and it was just like ridiculous. So I drop it, pick it up and finish. And then I like, I went into almost like a kind of like shock in a way. So I couldn't walk. Like I, I, I for a second, I just had to kind of put my hands on the frame and just be like, okay. Cause it, it was just one of these things like you're in the moment and I got, I got out of there and I was like, all right, cool. Like, but I, I literally did the entire contest then with a bicep off. So that's the worst one directly. Was it just from, black? It it what well, it started bruising, so that my whole forearm just let like everything yeah. just went because it all drains down, you yeah. know. So, um, <laughs> but it didn't bruise right away because I knew that like so when you tear a tendon, it won't it won't. If you tear a muscle, it'll bruise immediately. Tear tear a tendon off, then there there's not as much blood there. Right. So it took a while, but then it bruised up bad and. Um, I had to get it reattached and all that. So that directly from strongman. I mean, I did, I've definitely had other things like pulling a truck. I tore my, uh, planter fascia off the bottom of my foot. Mm. So that was not so fun. Um, oh. uh, I've had a few, man, a few, but nothing like that. That's the worst one that required surgery yeah. like directly from, from the sport. And what so, year was that? 2012. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, in all, in all, knock on wood, that's actually like compared to a lot of the guys, like, especially with how long my career was. Yeah. And again, I'm, I'm admitting that I could have trained smarter for that and avoided it. Right. I could have avoided, and it was a good lesson for me at that point because I trained in, in such a rage that I wasn't listening to my body. So I would go in and I would be hurting and I'd be like, screw it. Yeah. Cause you're we're, blind. We're pushing. And I know, I know what that feels like. You're blinded by that. that rage, it was, you know? I took it, I took it really personal. Like when they pulled the events and, and made the changes, well, it was a, they pulled it because you're going to yeah. win it. Well, it there's bullshit. There's a, also other things that I heard outside of that where, you know, the guy that was choosing the events, you know, he, he literally called somebody else that was part of it and said, how's Brian cheating on the Atlas stone? Oh, you know who you are, you son. Of yeah, a yeah, bitch. yeah. Not good. <laughs> and I heard that he told me that. I was like, and he's like, Brian, he's like, you realize you can't cheat on an atlas stone, right? Like, there's no way to cheat. It's a rock, and you pick it up. You, yeah. You're either strong enough or you're not strong enough. Yeah. Like, it's very simple. How do you so, cheat? How do you cheat? Pick it up a fucking rock. I mean, you don't on. cheat. It's, it's stupid. I mean, you can have like you wear a tacky and and you know I um had like for that event I sewed. Um, taught myself how to sew, how to make uh, forearm sleeves yeah. to protect my arms better. So I, I guess you could say, but the thing is, I, I gave that them to the other guys. That doesn't make you stronger, guys. though. Yeah, I literally made them for the other guys too, though. Yeah. So it wasn't like they didn't have access to them. They could have had access. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's bullshit. That's not cheating. Yeah. That's like, no. Fuck <laughs> no, it's them. there's so, not not cheating. Yeah, for sure. Um. So that I guess that that can lead us right into self guided. Wants to know what your uh, what was your like your recovery protocol? So like you, you do sure. you do like a really fucking heavy workout, right? So yeah. Like a really tough workout day. Like what is the the recovery protocol look like? Like sure. Like if so, cause, cause maybe somebody's listening that thinks like, you know what, man, I kind of want to do this and they lift heavy sure. and shit, but they feel like shit all the time. Cause they're always sore. Yeah. What do you, what does that look like? You know, you know, like just quick, just a yeah. quick rundown. Don't well, give away your trade secrets. No, anything, no, no. But. I I mean, for me, you're not going to replace sleep. Sleep has to be number one. And that's, that's, you got to make it that a priority outside of that. My, my <laughs> personal favorite was hot and cold. Oh, yeah, so I would go too. hot, to, like Three to five minutes. Normally, I would I would probably bump it more to five. So five minutes hot, five minutes cold. So I went a one to one. I know there's a lot of people out there who'd be like, oh, I'll stay in the hot for five minutes and in the cold for one minute or something like this. Yeah, but I would I, do five and three. Yeah, that so was something my, something that works. It worked, but everybody's different, was, right? Yeah. yeah. So it had to be at least a fifty degree temperature difference minimum, and then I bump mine more to it was probably closer to sixty because I'd go about forty five on the cold and like 104, 105 on the hot. So, you know, I, I like that. I like the big difference between um, the temperatures. And and that's what made you me like feel that the shock. best. I love that. Are you that saying feeling. hot tub, cold tub? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so hot, cold. Well, and that's something that cold. everyone can do. Yeah, Anybody, yeah. like most people have yeah. a bathtub. Yeah. Well, so, that's how I did know, it. Like, get your bathtub hot as, hot as fuck and then go... 
go go from your hot tub, your hot bath straight outside to a a, a horse trough. Sure. Yep. Dump dump uh, a cold shower. Water, yeah. Or even a cold shower. Sure. Like you can just like the yeah. they call it the Russian. Um, it's yeah, like you a can, Russian thing, right? The thing is, that's uh, for a lot of years how I did it was actually just like a, a livestock uh, tank. Yeah. So it's just like a big plastic that, tank. Yeah, it's I a would, truck. I would put ice in it, you know, and that's before before I could afford like an actual cold tub and like all this stuff. You what know? um so, what company do you use for cold tub now? So I got mine from uh, Cold Tub, like it's literally the name of the oh, really? brand. But it okay. was it's a um, mine's a saltwater cold tub, and I, I I loved it. They they um, of the model that I have, they only made a couple of them because they're bigger. Yeah. So I made one and they actually gave one to Shaq, which is pretty cool. And then they had this one and nobody wanted it because it won't fit anywhere. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's perfect because <laughs> I just want it outside for me. You know? Yeah. So um, it's 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 nice because it's deeper. So mm-hmm. you can get in there. It's a little bit deeper. But you got to be able to get up to it. Like, you, you have to submerge yes. your heart. Yeah. You know? Yes, I'm, I'm a say, big fan of all the way up to the yeah, neck. Yeah, when like playing football, you see the guys get in there and just have like their barely get their butt cheeks in there, you know. Sure. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they'd sit there for a minute or two. No. I'm like, dude, you got to get in this thing, yes, yeah. and it's actually less cold if you just get down in there. Yes. you know. Just th- take I'm the a big. I'm a. Shock. I'm. A, I am like. I take a cold shower every morning. I don't see, take hot perfect. showers in the morning. Yeah. Um. I used to when I was playing, just because I would like crawl to the shower. Sure. And oh, I, I needed it to warm up. Yes, you know. Yeah. But now I, you know, I I get that cold shower and it's like, um, I let it run on, especially because of all the brain injuries. Like you know, I've been told like let cold water just like run on your face and it'll help with the swelling in your brain. You know. Interesting. Because there's yeah. just natural swelling that happens there sometimes. Yeah. Like I could feel it when it's happening. No, I like I like it too, and I've used it. I think that's a recovery thing, but for me also the cold uh, cold tub was a mental challenge. So I would take that as 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 a challenge, right? So like for example, in the middle of winter here in Colorado, it's snowing. It's maybe you know maybe whatever ten degrees outside. Sometimes it's really, but those type of days, those are the days where I would I would make myself do it. But the thing with a cold tub, like in that scenario. It is not easy to go out. You're either like you know shoveling snow off of the tub or Breaking whatever, and, then, and you're jumping, jumping into that, and it's you're getting snowed on. Maybe it's blowing, like whatever. But those were the moments where I loved it because I remember I would always look up like the, it'd be dark because I typically did it late at night. Like maybe put the kids to bed and I go do it. It's eleven o'clock at night or whatever. And it's like one of these things where you're building this discipline where I know I'm winning because the other guys aren't doing yes. it. Yes. Right? So glad you hit yes. that. Yeah. I love that. that. There's love a, that. there's like a dopamine yeah. drop that you get from, yeah. from that, I think. And it's it, it sounds almost psychotic because it's like this obsession of like there's guys out there training. Yep. But they're not doing the kind of shit I'm doing. Sure, like they are not training as hard as I am. Yeah, I, w- I refused to. Th- I re- I couldn't sleep at night yep. if I thought that I didn't train my hardest or do yes. everything I could that day to try to get just a little bit better yep. that day, just a little bit. Because yep. you know those guys at the end of the day they're tired. They're like, ah, fuck, I'm gonna watch Netflix and you yeah. know, or I want to be with my wife or I want to do this For and sure. that. Like, no, yeah. we'll take. The, do you have the discipline to go out there and, and sure. dunk yourself in a fucking <laughs> in Bro. some cold ass water in yeah. the middle of the winter. Yeah. For, like, I mean, for, for three minutes, yes. it only takes three minutes, yeah. but the dopamine that you get from that. Yeah. And then it, and it's, it's how many days like that can you stack? Right? Sure. Yep. Can you keep doing it and be consistent with it? Uh, yeah. You know, I, like your Instagram, you talk a lot about consistency and that's, yes. that's something that a lot of people struggle with. It's yeah. like when things get tough, yeah, they're like, oh, see, I told you, you know, well, I told that, you it was going to, uh, this was going to happen or that was going to happen. And they, and they quit. Yeah. It's, it's a competitive. Easy to quit. The thing is, it's a competitive mindset because I, even when I was a kid, right? Like, and this is going back a long, long time, but I always felt like there was somebody out there working harder than mm. me, always, and it and it would eat at me, even even when I was young, right? So like like I'd go out and practice basketball. Let's just say I'm you know 10, 12 years old, whatever. I had to make so many shots in a row, or so many free throws in a row, or something, right? Like yeah. I had to. And if I didn't do that, then I was getting beat by somebody somewhere. Because at the end of the day, like if you want a spot in something, right? So like you look at like how many guys actually get to play in the NFL. 
How many guys actually get to compete at the top level in strongman? How many college scholarships are there available? At the end of the day, there's not a lot, mm. right? So if you want to separate yourself and be at that level, you have to be willing to do those things. You have to be able to separate yourself. And so I always, I always just thought that way. And so that really has stuck with me like through everything, but it was always like that next step, right? So sitting yeah. out there in the cold, I was separating myself. I was doing something the next guy was not willing to do and suffer through it. And I would, even in training, sometimes I would come up with crazy things. Like if, if I was off a little bit or I needed to have that type of day where it's like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do something crazy and we're just going to see who quits first. Right. Like that type of thing, but it'll, it'll sharpen, it'll sharpen everything up. Yeah. Right. And, and you, you need to get in that deep water sometimes and not know, am I going to be able to swim or am I not? Right. But I think you learn that through, through a lot of things, but that discipline, you're not going to die. Right. Like no. it's, you're not going to die. You're and, not gonna and, die. I, and I think <laughs> I was really fortunate with like in college, our um, uh, coach in Juco, he was like a very military uh, type of individual or it was kind of like that. Like it was like, Hey, we're going to go. And if we're doing something and somebody quits or whatever, you'll, you will just start again. Everybody yep. will start again. So like you, you, you don't make the time. It, when that, you're like that suicides type of and stuff thing. like yeah, that. Yeah. It bonded. I mean, in that scenario, it bonded our team together because it's like, I'm looking at you, you better not quit because I'm not going to quit. Iron right? sharpens iron. Yeah. So this is the same thing I tried to do with a lot of the guys I trained with was create this scenario where it's like, hey, we have this challenge, but are you going to quit or am I going to quit, right? And it was one of these things where it's beautiful because you got a lot stronger from being in that situation. And I would always challenge myself to do the next thing because, you know, and, and this is what I'll, I'll talk about with people sometimes. Nobody knew if I did that or not, right? Because even now, social media, it would have been really easy for me to post a picture. It's no way outside, hey, I jumped in the cold tub, but did I really jump in the cold tub? I have to I have to look myself in the mirror and say, did I do it, right? And again, that dopamine of I did it, I got better, I handled my business, now I can go to sleep knowing I did everything I could have and wake up and do it all again, right? And this is the the separating factor that I think a lot of people, you know, don't realize is that that type of consistency and doing something to get better each and every day, man, if you if you can do that, you will separate yourself over the long run so much further Especially the nowadays. Person. Especially oh my gosh. Nowadays. nowadays it's the thing the thing that and this is touching on what we started this whole thing with men being men, like society, how weak society has become. The thing that I will say is for any kids out there now, if they are willing to do this now and to turn off the video games and to turn off like that, that and, and go outside and actually learn how to work hard and learn how to, to be disciplined, they will crush crush other kids, crush them, crush them. right? Literally, they, right they, right will, they will be so much further along in life because of that. Whereas I think, you know, we're, we're and I'm fortunate and I, I say fortunate, I think it's, it's almost a blessing where I didn't grow up with a cell phone. Yeah. I didn't have those distractions, way. you know, yes, you had video games and this type of thing, but it wasn't, it wasn't so distracting where, it was pulling me off. Like I could go handle it, what I needed to handle, you know? I yeah. mean, yes. Could I have got involved in video games? Sure. But I wanted to go work hard. Right. So it's kind of like, okay, that separation well, because but now it's the on, it's the online gaming. Yes. That these kids yeah. are all like, they're fucking, that's where they're getting their social interactions at. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you just go out in the neighborhood and fucking go find a pickup yeah. basketball game. Yes. Like, Go go ride your bike. Go play. Yeah, like, go and, play. Go be a fucking yes, kid. You yes, know, yep. not don't sit on your ass and eat Cheetos. No, and play yeah. video games. And you know, yeah, there are some of these kids that are making like fucking, you know, they're like damn near billionaires from playing video games. Sure, but it's sure. like that's an even smaller percentage. Yes, because now yeah. you have kids that will watch other kids play video games. Yes, they're not even playing video games anymore. They will spend they their time watch yeah, yeah. watching another kid play yeah. video games. That blows my fucking mind. Dude. No, like, it's crazy. It doesn't make it, it. I mean, I guess we do similar things, right? Like, you know, I'll watch somebody else play football, but like, I still now when I watch football, I'm like, I I get fucking jacked up because I'm like, I fuck. You know, I know sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I want to yeah. go do it. You know, I yeah, want to like yeah. show them how to do it. Or, yes. You know, this is how you should have done it. You know, yeah. like things like that. And um, I I think that I think that that is like the best kind of lesson you could teach young kids. And it's great that you know, even with my daughter, right? Like. 
we do we try to limit screen time. Yeah, right? me too. Like yep. even if it's just she will literally just chase me around the fucking house. Sure. And I'll just run around the house, and it sounds yes. like a damn no, it's elephant great. running yes. through the house. But it's like, but yeah. she, you know that that's just running around the house. Yes. And, and then I get I got her little MMA gloves, so I have her like hitting my hands and stuff. Sure, you know, sure. Just getting it out of her and yeah. Uh, go upstairs, like hey, we're gonna do flips. Like let's sure. do flips. Do ten push ups. Do yes. I'll ever do ten burp ten burpees, ten push ups, and I'll do that like ten times. Yes. And then yeah, she's yeah. still not tired, and I'm sure. like. Yeah, <laughs> you know, let's do as much as the we can. Never to, ending like, just energy. Keep, and yeah, yeah. Or I'll have her run simple. Like if you're a parent and your kid is like rambunctious and haven't you know, and you just like hand him an iPad to get him to shut not up. Not good. Like yeah, that is yeah, the yeah. worst yeah. fucking thing. And I no. and li- and I'm not perfect. I've done it. Sure. I've done it where I'm like I'm fucking exhausted here. Yes. <laughs> like, well, it's, it's you know, but again, it's, it's that balance of not all the time. Yeah, right? not all like, the time. It's yes, it's cool. Like you know maybe a, a show or something or whatever, but it's not all the time. That's not your go-to, yeah. right? And this is this is what my wife and I, and I'm very thankful and, and lucky that she's on the same page with me because it's like, this is not like, just go out and get dirty, yeah. right? Just go. Like, that's that's yeah. what I want. And, just go play. You know, it's that's what I used to do when I was a kid. Like, you know, I grew up, uh, got to go play, like, on my uncle had a farm, so it's like I learned, literally learned how to drive so I could stack hay, and I yeah. got to go you know, around and, and learn how to shoot and do different things there where it's like, I'm so fortunate with that, but it's so important. Uh, you know, kids need to use their imagination, man. <clears throat> and again, a video like that, you're watching somebody else do something. You go do it. You go do it. Yes. Yeah. Go yeah. try it. Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, dude, we'll take my four year old and I'll literally get out a timer on my phone Yeah. and I'll have her hit start run down the hallway to the front door, touch the door and come back. And she will do that 50 times. That's awesome. And try yeah, to yeah. beat, she'll try to beat it. She's competitive. So I like, like it. It's in her blood. I like it. Yeah. So she'll yeah. come back and hit it. And she tries to beat her time every time. That's great. And like, yeah, just yeah. shit like that. Like that is so easy that to do as a parent. Sure. And it takes 30 minutes of my day, of my day. And she no, had great. a blast doing it. Like yes. it's the simple things with these kids. I love it. Um, okay. What's, um, what's the next question we want to ask? Oh, you know what you should do? Jacob, Braylon too wants to know if that uh that's my Super Bowl ring right there. See if oh, that man, fits look you. Look at that thing. He wants to know if it fits you because everybody that comes on here always talks about. But just pull it, ever. just pull it up. It's a magnet. Oh yeah, there you nice. go. Well, that's freaking cool. So it goes on my ring finger on my right. On my yeah, there you go. That's the that's, first person to put it on where it looks normal. That's awesome, dude. What's you know what size it is? It's like an eighteen, I think. Jeez, dude. Or 17, 18, something that's like that. That's awesome. See, I think I'm like a 16 or 17, so that's perfect. That's sick. That's really cool, man. It's hard as fuck to get, man. <laughs> Bro, that's something. Well, obviously. Well, so much has yeah. to go right. Like, you can have a fucking all pro, pro bowl season and be a fucking four win team, you know? Yeah. Like, that's gee, everything has to come together. You know, we had Peyton Manning for four years, dude, and won, a, won one Super Bowl. That's, we were that's the number one team in the AFC for four years, and only one year resulted in a ring. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So that's, it's just I'm really proud yeah. of that, man. You should be. That yeah. was my dream. Like when when I was seven years old, I watched the the Green Bay well, Packers win a Super Bowl, Bowl. 50, which is even I yeah, Super like Bowl fifty, man. Yeah, yeah. We fucking and the defense won it. You know, like, yes. we fucked them. Dude, up. you guys were ridiculous. <laughs> it was, Honestly, it was, it was awesome, fun, man. It, it was, was awesome. I well, I had fun watching that. So that's. Yeah, that's that's cool. That's so it a does, first Super it Bowl does fit you. Person. You're the first person that it's actually fit on, that's fit on awesome. their hand. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's funny because like, um, I'm when I wrestle people, when I like grab a hold of people and stuff, usually they're like Jesus, you know. But like, yeah. it, it's the opposite for now. That's why um, I'll leave this in the next one because we're we're gonna talk about. Somebody wanted to ask you about the MMA training and what you thought. There we go. Um, what's it like training martial arts? being like bigger, right? This is from Griffin Jewel. What's it like being a big guy in training martial arts whenever you're like, your references are guys that are like sure. half your size, you know? Well, I think, I think it's, it's different, right? So some of the things are just different and, and even you and I going through it, there are certain things that smaller guys will do that won't work. And also things that bigger guys are capable of doing that smaller guys simply are not. Yeah. Right. So it's just learning that has probably been one of the most interesting things because, you know, it's, Hey, you're bigger. We'll just do this or, or maybe find that outlet or whatever. So yeah. it's, it's kind of body dependent, size dependent, you know, on some things. So I think that that's probably the most interesting thing, but also 
there's just levels to it. Yeah. Right? There's just levels. <laughs> like you uncover one thing and then it leads to the next thing and next thing and next thing. So it's kind of like you open this door. And I think that's what's kind of fun about it, to be fair. It's like you, you, it's a never ending course. Yeah. Right. Like it's not like, well, okay, but then it goes to the level, well, I'm going to try to set this up. I'm going to see if I can get it. If I don't get it, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this, whatever, and see if another door opens or whatever. Like it's like a, a chess match. Yeah. Within like a what violent chess match. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's it's fun. Like with with the size, I think it's fun. I think. Um, are you having more fun? Uh, are you having more fun now that you know that you don't have to like go easy? Like you can like yeah. do it. Like because yeah. I because that's like when we first started. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago when we first started doing this, I could feel that you weren't like going, and I was like, Brian, sure. fucking go. Yes. Like, yeah. You yeah. Got, you're good. Like put your weight it's, on me. Like. Right, yeah. Like when you get me against the wall, fucking like Push I know forward. how to like, yeah. Yeah. I, cause I, I, cause I do have a little bit of a background on this and I was a wrestler and I did play football. So I know how to like Handle be it. a good partner, Absolutely. right? Yeah. I know yeah. how to be a good partner. I'm not going to, you're not going to hurt me, right? Like, sure. Yeah. If you fucking pick me up and bury your shoulder into my fucking chest. Yeah. You might hurt. You're probably going to fucking break my rib, but sure. like we're there's, that's where we're being smart, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm like, dude, fucking drive me into the wall yes. and fucking lift and you the, do it. And then now I'm seeing that like our practices I have so much fun in there because sure. like, cause I get the, I'm like being in service of someone else. Right. It's, it's awesome. Like I'm getting man. the yeah. physicality that I love, but I'm also in service of somebody else and to watch it like all come together for you. Like when we do like our little live, like, Oh, keep them against the wall sure. or keep them, uh, you know, we're going to cut them loose at this point. Like watching it all come together for you and feeling like every session you get better. Yeah. It's like, it's fucking awesome, dude. Like, dude it's, you're, it's you're, fun. you're learning, yeah. you learn so much I th- that's your mentality though, as an athlete and as a champion, as have, having being a cha- being a champion, you know how to like take coaching. Yeah. Right. So yeah. a lot of people don't know how to take coaching. No, they I just think, don't know how to take it. Yeah. Yeah. There, every, every scenario is different, but like you said, it's, it's great for me to feel with, with you coming in. It's like learning in, in, a, in a different way, but people don't, like you said, it's, there's not many people like you like me out there that are, that can actually move and, and learn and, and go together, you know, like, so this is the scenario that's, that's crazy. And I think that that's why it's so fascinating to people, right? Like it's, it's like, they love seeing it because they crap. can't believe it. Yeah. The big, and if they were, big guys. And that's funny because when we're, we don't, we don't, I, cause I could tell you're the same way. You don't think that you're as big as you really are. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah. and I, I'm the same way. Like, people are just like, "Oh, you're fucking huge," and I'm like, "I don't, like, I don't feel that way." Like, I feel like there's, sure. I don't feel limited by my size. You know, yep. like, yep. I feel like I can do anything athletically that I want to do. Absolutely. And that's yeah, like, yeah. and I could see that you have that same mentality that you're not like, "Oh, I can't do that because I'm too big." Yes. Like, you don't, yep. feel, you don't think that way. You try it regardless. Sure. Like, yep. yep. And I could see that whenever you figure it out, it like clicks in your brain, and then, then it like. That's the that's the mark of a great athlete and a great competitor is it just it stays there. Stays there, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, like for example, I try to tell people, you know, I, I, I struggled with like um right, like going to school and going to class and stuff. I struggled to like memorize that shit. Yeah. But I never in my life struggled to learn a football play. That's awesome. Which yeah, is yeah. and I knew what everyone was doing. Sure. Not just my job. I knew what the guy next to me and the guy to the right of me, to the left of me, the guy behind me was doing. Sure. And then on top of that, I know what I why we're running it because we're probably running it because they're going to run this on offense. Sure. So like, why can't I take? And I, that's where the ADHD I think comes in is where if I don't love doing it, then yep. I'm just like I can't. We need to love it. Retain. Yeah, it, you, you know? love it and you and it'll it'll click. And that's I could tell you're having fun in there. Like yeah. we're having a good time. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like. That the, the egos aren't there. That was like that was like when I first met you, because uh, that's why Lauren was like, "Come over and meet him and see and and just sure. you know to the and see what he, what you think of him." Because I I don't know. I never never met you before. So no, of know, course. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if this, you're like some sh- big strong man. You're a fucking asshole. Like yeah, yeah. You're gonna try yeah. to <laughs> break my arm or something in there. No, like, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But when my, when we first met, I was like, "Oh fuck yeah!" Like yeah. this is gonna be fun because I could tell that you don't have that ego. Yeah. Like you don't have an ego as far as like. I have to win every rep. Like, no, no, yeah. I can get Just better, get at better. This, right? And that's get where better. I was like, okay, we're going to be good for each other here because I can really help him. Because I, 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 le- I leave my ego like on the fight. Like no, as soon as my, as soon as I kick those fucking, yeah, those, uh, those flops off, you know, I'm jumping and Dude, I jump on there. My ego's well, gone. It makes it more fun in a way because you are learning, right? So it's kind of like I'll feel this, I'll feel that, yeah. and it's been, it's been great. Like the progression has been great. It's, it's. You know, again, it's a mentally stimulating thing 
because you you have to you have to learn. Yeah. You know, like otherwise you're just going to stay the same and not pick it up. It would get very frustrating. So mm-hmm. being able to, you know, being able to learn and run through in your head how to do it, how to execute it, how to make it happen. Like this is cool. Like to me it, it's cool. Like, you know, breaking and I would do the same thing with with anything that I've done. It's like breaking down, you know, film of lifting. Okay. Well, let's look at this. Where did the hips go? Where is the shoulder? You know, how are we locked in? Like, can we get better? Yeah. You know, what's the bar pad? Like things like this. There's a technique yeah. to everything. Yes. Like, and that's yeah. I think people probably have a misconception of the strong man stuff. It's like you're not just strong. Yeah. Like you have to be athletic to do that shit. Yes. Like you have yeah, to be yeah. an athlete. Yeah. Because you like there's a technique to picking shit up. There's Big a time. technique to pressing something over your head. There's a technique, especially from bringing it from the ground to get it up to your shoulder and press it over your fucking head. Yeah. Uh, Walking with, uh, you know, that one where you guys get in and fucking walk with it. Like, sure. There's a technique to keeping your, you, if you don't keep your core tight, like you're, you've lost. Oh, it's, you know, so it's like, you're not just, Oh, I could just bend over and pick something up. You know, that's not what it's about. Like it's about the technique to it. And you have to be fast because you guys are racing against time usually or against reps. I mean, this is some of the weights are are crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Fucking insane. Like, what's the heaviest? What do you think the heaviest like load you've ever had on your back? So the the heaviest load, that's the event you're talking about is a super yoke. So it's basically a bar and then it's got uprights, and then you pick it up inside, it's on your back, and then you walk with it, right? So the the um, the heaviest one that I've ever done, uh, we went up and and there was a couple rounds to it, but the top weight was fifteen hundred and sixty five pounds. <laughs> so that's like I I picked that up and and I mean uh, that was an event that that I was very good at. Oh like, yeah, very I very good at. So well, it that... was like carrying that. I'm the only guy that could carry it the whole way without dropping it. Um, How far did you have to carry it? That that one, I want to say it was about f- fifteen feet, something like this. But that's like the heaviest weight ever carried. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's a, a this record. one right here. Yeah. So that loaded with some like big. Actually, it might be that picture on the bottom, um, right there. The big bales. It was cotton bales. So that's that's the yoke that was loaded. Um, but it's me. <laughs> yeah, me doing that with. Almost sixteen hundred pounds. So, but that that was. I mean, that's that's a another level, man. Like, this is this is. Uh, yeah, that's actually the video of it. I think like Rogue put that out. But um, <laughs> yeah, I. So this is this is one like where you kind of confidence is big, right? Like yeah. confidence is very big. So walking up to that, the the mental place that you have to go to get under that type of load and, and pick it up and be able to move with it is crazy. Like most well, people it, look understand. right here. Most like when you're taking that step, like yep. that weight transfers to one leg. Yep. Yeah. So like how big your steps are is, is a big thing and being able to stabilize. But I mean, with this, with this event, like the, you know, the off week, and this is now managing training, but like my off weeks when I was training for that, and this is a down week, would be a thousand pounds on that. Yeah. Like a thousand pounds with no belt on, nothing. So just pick up <sighs> so a thousand you can feel pounds. It. Of, yeah. But you would get so much stronger and then I would put the belt on, I would up the weight a yeah. little bit. You know, but but again, like th- this is just something you train for and and um, you know, I think I think with this event I could have I could have gone heavier like than that. Do you think you, you could have hit like two thousand pounds? Two thousand might be a little bit more. You think I, I more think, like sixteen hundred, probably. I think I think probably seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, maybe yeah. eighteen, <sighs> maybe eighteen. Dude, um, that is fuck. It was, but th- the thing is, that day I was ready for it. Right? Yeah, like I was just primed. I was ready. I was confident. I knew what I was gonna do, and um, because I put all the hard work into getting ready, like you have to just kind of almost, almost get into a spot where you go outside of your body mentally. Oh, I know. And. Um, you make it happen, right? Like this is the thing is like, I, I was ready and then you walk up there and you can, you can channel that so much in that moment that, you know, it, it didn't matter what it weighed to be fair. Like it, it didn't it, matter. You didn't even think about the weight. No, I'm just doing yeah, it. I, I like, totally I'm going to pick it that. up. I'm going to take the first step and I'm going to go like, and it was just, you, you're, you're just on a different level. Like that was just a different level. What would like, you, what would you, um, what kind of visualizations would you do? 
to so get, I, would you use like rage and anger or would you use like, so I would, I would visualize going into that contest. Like, so I would, I had already played that in my head so many yeah. times of how it was going to, you know, how the stage was going to feel, how the yoke, the bar, the tape on the bar, how I was going to grab it, like what, what it was going to be like, what the crowd's like, what the energy's like, like everything down to the smallest little things. So when I walk up there, it's almost like deja vu. Cause I've ran it in my head so many yeah. times I've already done it. I've, and then I've, I've carried it. I felt how it's going to feel when I'm done. Like, like I've ran the whole thing. So this is any, any big event like that or any big lift. Like I've already put myself in that scenario so many times. So it wasn't really like, for me, it wasn't really like rage necessarily. Right. Like it was, it was more just like this supreme confidence visualization where I'm walking in there. And, you know, for me, it's like, I'm walking into that event and in my head, you know, quite literally, there is nobody in the world stronger. Right. So it's like, I'm walking out there and saying like, <laughs> I don't, I'm I, nobody else. Like I would watch guys struggle because they would go before me and they're yeah. struggling. Right. And some guys would look at that and say, Oh shit, they're struggling. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. And like, I'm like, good. They're struggling. It's, they should struggle. They're not yeah. as strong as me, yep. right? So that like that's how I thought, and so I would almost feed off of them having a hard time. And it's like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up here and make this look like a toy, yeah, right. So it's like I know what I can do, <laughs> but it was just this like you have to get into that. Well, type like of considering mindset. how much weight is on there, like your facial expression is not one of like somebody who's carrying mm-hmm. damn near sure. sixteen hundred yeah. pounds on their back. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I just, I get that mentality so much because I, when you talk about visualizing things and this, like if you're listening, you don't have to be the world's strongest man. You don't have to be the the strongest man on the planet. You don't have to be a professional athlete. You don't have to be any of those things to take those lessons and use them in your everyday life because visualizing things, I would do the same thing the night before a game, uh, even like the week leading up to the whole week leading up to a game, right? So like starting Wednesday, um, when we would get to start practicing for that team we're playing on Sunday, I would vis- I would pr- li- quite literally practice the same plays that I'm going to see in the game Sure. that day on Wednesday, right? So Wednesday I'm going to see a lot of the run plays. So I would literally watch the film, go out and practice, implement that on the field, and then it's the same thing, right? So you're thinking about how it's going to feel when you carry it. You wake up, you go train, you carry a 1,000 pounds. You've, sure. You know, you know what that weight's going to feel like. Yeah. So then – when I get out there on the field on Sunday, I've already visualized what it's like when I sack the quarterback, stand over him. I, so it's like I see the ball snap, I move, I see the pass rush move I'm going to use. Yeah. I get by the guy, I hit the quarterback, I take him to the ground, I stand up, I howl. Sure. And I and I so when it happens, I it's like it happens so fast. Yeah. That like it's like a blink of an eye. Yep. Right. I always resort to a play that against the the Patriots, it was in the snow. It was an overtime game. Um, Vaughn was Vaughn Miller's beside me, and he wasn't supposed to drop. We had one on ones on these two on these two offensive linemen, and I was like, "Oh, it's time to eat." Sure. And when I looked over at him, he didn't like look back, so I knew we weren't running like a pass rush game against them, which is like a twist or something. Got it. So like normally we would run something like that on a one on one, but he I thought okay he he wants to win too. I was like, all right, it's a race to the quarterback. Let's go. Sure. So I get down on my stance. And I come off the ball, and I had already like visualized this happening, uh, and I'd set it up earlier in the game too, where I was gonna be able to like kind of long arm this guy because yeah. I've been working this inside brush where he was setting back deep. Okay. And I just boom hand in his chest, and then the tackle came down. So I got him. I got this 310, 315 pound guard. Yeah. And then this three hundred and forty pound tackle comes down on me, and I just wham I grabbed That's him, awesome. and I threw them over each other, like tripped them over each That's other. That's great. Threw him down, grabbed Tom Brady by his jersey. Yeah. And he like tried to slip out, and I like double legged him. That's like, awesome. Grabbed his legs, and he fell. Yeah. And yeah. Jumped up and went crazy. Yes. And it and in in the moment, I was like, man, that took forever. I yeah. can't believe he still had the ball. But then I watched it on a film. It was like. Like that. Just it was instant. just like, it just happened, you know? That's crazy. It's and almost it's, like in slow motion. And that's what yeah. I always res- resort back to is like, you don't have, like, you don't have to be an athlete, a professional athlete to do this. Like, you can literally visualize like that. If you've got like a big meeting or something, right? Like, yep. visualize how that's going to go, right? Yep. Like, yep. Well, how, what are you going to say, right? Absolutely. Write it down. Absolutely. Like, yeah. manifesting things is like, I believe in that 1,000%, yep. right? I watched, sure. I watched Vaughn every day. That of his contract year, the year we won the Super Bowl, 
every day in the meeting, he would sit down on the top corner. He would write a hundred million in it. That's awesome. And he would, and that's what he would start the meeting. And I'd see him write it. And I just every like, time, yeah. And you know what he signed? He signed a hundred twenty million dollar contract that year. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And he was the Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's huge, like, man. But he, he visualized again, it and he yes, did it. You know, yes. like he he manifested that. And like yep. you did that. That's the, exactly what you were doing. You were manifesting the fact that you are the strongest motherfucker on this planet. Yep. And yep. Nobody's stronger. So like when you talk about seeing a guy like struggle with it, yep. when I saw an offensive lineman fucking sucking wind and like saw yep. that he was tired or just saw that he harder. was like arguing yeah. with the guy next to him or any sure. of that shit. I was like, oh, I got him. <laughs> I fucking got him. He's yes. done. Yes. Like if I saw him fucking bend over in the huddle yep. or I saw him go <sighs> like yep. that, like, yep. oh, I knew it yep. was it's over. Go time. It yeah, was yeah. over for him. So that competitive. So that, that is like such a, you can take that into literally any aspect of your life, whatever job, like Lane, Lane, my producer, Lane, he's a firefighter. Yeah. I'm sure that you've been, like, you never walk into a fire thinking like, you know, you don't want to be surprised by something, right? I've yeah. been in buildings that are on fire that I'm like, okay, I've been here 20 times already because when we drive by it, you're going to visualize how it's going to go. You're going to check out where the plugs are. In fact, there was just one that popped last night when our first in where I've been in the house next to it on fire. And so as soon as that address drops, it's like, okay, cool. I know the plug isn't on this block. There's only... In my district, there's only five blocks that don't have a fire hydrant. Sorry, that's a plug. Fire hydrant. We hook up to it for water. This is one of those blocks. It caught on fire six months ago. It dropped last night. And the first thing in my head, I wasn't on shift, but I get this alert that there's a fire yeah. that we're going to. And first thing in my head is like, oh, man, they have to hit the plug. Detroit doesn't have a plug. They got to hit the plug right before that, and they got to come in through the back. And you, I pulled up, and I just... Check it on my crew. That's exactly what they did because we've already been there. Yeah, and it's every single played, time they teach the same thing that's, at the police academy. That's the um, coolest. You got to visualize. If you're in Seven Eleven as a cop, you better be visualizing what's going to happen if somebody walks in with a gun because it could happen to you, sure. and you got to know how to react. And then when it does, it's not like, oh no, what's going on? It's like, oh, I've been here before. I can handle this. And it's the same yeah. thing. We do it all the time. Yeah, and that's. I talked to. Um, you ever heard of a guy named Mike Glover? Uh-uh. Um, he does. He has Fieldcraft Survival. He's an awesome guy. We had him on the podcast, but he um, he talks about like situational awareness, like when you're out in public, you yeah. know, like when you're being aware of absolutely just being aware. Yes. Most people are walking around like a fucking zombie with no. headphones in on their phone, not yep. paying attention to shit. That's why, um, you know, not to be insensitive, but that's why a guy's able to walk into a fucking grocery store and shoot the place up. Yeah, because yep. and not and. And no, because nobody's fucking paying attention. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh shit, you know? But if you're like, just have any kind of awareness, you can fucking at least protect yourself and get yes. yourself out of there, you yeah. know? You're not just gonna be like a, a you know, a fish in a barrel. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's get to a couple more of these questions. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so I did um, Ancestry DNA. Okay. And I figured out, like, because I didn't have, I didn't know my, my father and my mom side of the family. Like, I don't, they're just all fucked up. So nobody knows what the hell's going on. So I wanted yeah. to. I wanted to kind of figure out where I came from, you know? Sure. Uh, where my blood comes from, where my bloodline you yeah, know, comes from, yeah, what yeah. part of the world does it come from? And, yeah. Uh, it, it, all, it all comes from Scandinavia, right? Sure. So then I, I like embraced that Viking in me, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it was like empowering, you know? Sure. Um, so what, uh, what, so Jackson, Jackson McCullough, 55. He wants to know what's your, what, you, what is your ethnicity? Do you know where you come from? Like where your bloodline comes from? I'm like, kind of a mix of, of everything. Obviously, I think a lot of people are. Well, yeah, uh, most now, of it. Nobody's yeah. a purebred. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I've on, on my mom's side, I've got uh, some Italian. Uh, my grandpa was Italian, so I know that that for sure. Like Northern um, Italian. So, so he actually, the, my grandpa actually grew up in New York, um, and was childhood friends with Frank Sinatra. Oh shit! So it was one of these things where, like, speaking of like, hey, I'm going to make things happen with my life. Like at that time. Frank Sinatra said, I'm going to go be a singer. And everybody thought he was nuts, right? Like, hey, you should be a farmer. You should do something like yeah. good with your life. And and he grew up to do what he did. But um, yeah, so I got some Italian there. And then uh, I think we got some, uh, I, I don't know for sure. Doing one of those tests would be interesting. You should do it. Yeah, it would it's, it would be interesting. Cool. So um, You'd be surprised yeah. as to where, because mine goes from like um, Scandinavia down, down to um, Germany and Ireland. I'm sure I've and got some. And then from of there that, yeah. straight to Appalachia. <laughs> Interesting. Isn't that crazy, man? Yeah. I should do one. I should do one. I, I guess I can't knowledgeably answer that question because um, I don't know 100%. Right. You know, so you just know you got some Italian. I guarantee you've got 
probably some German. Yeah. And you've got to have some Northern European Scandinavian in you. It's something. To, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to. Um, let's see. What's the next one here? What's What's the next good question? Here's probably a good one because we were talking about this earlier after our workout. Um, what What does your daily diet diet look like? This is from uh, Drew Dugan. So I I mean the diet was the hardest part of strongman for me, uh, just due to the the nature of it. Right, you have to eat from when you get up to when you go to bed. Yeah, like training wasn't ever the hard part. It was always a diet, like trying to be regimented with that. If I'm on the road, I got a cooler with me. I've got food with me. I always know where my next meal is going to come from. That type of thing. So. I was really big on bison. Bison was my favorite, um, eating that. Yeah. Like, I love that. So I would be, you know, most of the times, you know, around five pounds of bison in a day yeah. is what I would eat. And then, you know, mix that with rice and potatoes and obviously eggs. And, you know, really, to be fair, it was pretty pretty basic, like, when it came to that. You know, Just that a lot of, of thing. it. A lot of it. Yeah. A lot of it. So you're eating the I, same I'm a big meal. bison guy. I like it, yeah. Um, I actually, I, one of my sponsors, uh, Great Range Premium Bison. They're oh, based nice. Of, yes. You, I it's the, that. It's the, that. That's yeah. probably the bison. When you buy the bison yes. in the store, that's the bison you're buying. Yeah. Great people. They're Colorado-based. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome it's, people. It's so delicious. if yeah. you want that connect, I can give you that connect because they are just awesome, awesome people. Yeah. Um, and and I'd, like, when I like when would eat bison, sweet potatoes, and broccoli yeah. like three times a day. Yeah. And eat like a dozen eggs for breakfast, you know, like yes. that was like, no, it's great. And the, the thing is that like, that's those staples, um, you know, sweet, sweet potato for sure. Uh, you know, throwing some, maybe some salad, some vegetables, but like, I didn't, I didn't waste a lot of room in my stomach on that type of stuff. That's why just, I would use broccoli. Cause it's so like, yeah, just a little bit goes a long way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, so th- I mean that like primarily was that obviously throwing some, some cheat food, uh, you know, people know that I like cheesecake. So like who doesn't cheesecake. fuck it? If you don't like cheesecake, get wrong. the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, 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 seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking phenomenal. Cheese, no, it's awesome. And so, I'm not talking about that uh, healthy bullshit cheesecake. We no, want that fucking real, real yeah, cheesecake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real <laughs> cheesecake. That's a, that's, I knew, I knew for me, like that was one of the things we would throw in around a contest would, would be uh, cheesecake at night, like after I'd eat dinner, that would be my last thing, like one or two pieces of cheesecake. But that was like the, the, I always call it like big power food. Right. So like when it was time to be really strong, cheesecake got put in the diet and it was go time, you know? So that was, <laughs> it probably did something for you mentally too. It, it did. You, yeah. It did. Cause I knew it was Make that time happy. where we would kind of start to throw that in or throw in some, you know, pizza or something like where you get that type of food. And with strength, it was like calories. Sometimes they needed to be a little bit dirtier, you know, and you would just like go into a contest that would help peak. Yeah. You know, so you're eating like massive amounts of food, but that's, that just was part of it. So. And then, yeah. and then when you're lifting heavy, you know, my wife is like an expert in this shit. So she always tells me like, when you lift heavy, you're burning way more calories than some guy that just goes and runs a couple miles. You it's, know? it's crazy. Yeah. Cause when you're yeah. running and doing that kind of, that level of conditioning, uh, whatever they, whatever your heart rate is at and everything, but that's only you're only burning while you're doing it. Sure. When you lift heavy, you're burning the whole fucking day. Yes. Like you lift After, in the morning. Yep. You you lift heavy in the morning. You're burning all, all day. day, and then yes. at night you'll yep. drift weight. Yes. Like you'll drift weight because you're st- like I would wake up in the middle of the night when I was lifting when I, I I mean I still lift pretty decently heavy but not like I used to but I would wake up in the middle of the night in a fucking dead sweat because my sure. metabolism is like <laughs> just know, driving it. Yeah, just driving. The thing it. is, I'd be like, I need a fucking. I'd come down of, and have a protein shake because I'm so fucking hungry. You well, know? you have a lot of like that. that just the the muscle. I mean, because you know, obviously it's hard to say with body fat and all that, but I mean, there was different tests that I had done where I was at like. 320 pounds of lean body mass, you know? <laughs> so like, it's, it's crazy. 320, like something like that. 320, 330. It's crazy. Yeah. Like the fuel that is just, people don't realize like I, I was probably like just, just a basal metabolic rate. It's like 6,000 calories a day. Yeah. Just get up and do nothing. Do nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. Yeah. And that's hard for people to imagine, but the, the amount of calories that need to go in when you're training hard. It's double that. It's at least crazy. It's crazy. I mean, crazy, you're, yeah. And I, I was telling you, I was like, during training camp, man, like I would, you know, even sometimes during the off season, like when I would do like, cause I would, I would, I would do like three, four workouts a day. Yeah. Different types well, of workouts, but like the requirements are huge. Well, yeah. yeah cause yeah, it's, yeah. I would lift and then run. And then I would do like, um, I would hit mitts. So I'd go in and do a boxing workout and then I would do like another, like, yoga workout or something then i would do like like so i was doing like burning all day just all day long i'm fucking crushing calories but like so my meals 
were ridiculous. Yes. Like, and I, I was I, probably I, doing close to 12,000 calories on those days just to, just to stay at 300 pounds. Sure. Cause if just I miss so one meal, down. Yeah. if I would miss one meal when I was training like that, yeah. I would lose 10 pounds. Like it was like See, that. That's, it's most people will never understand the energy expenditure. It's insane. Yes. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. I had to, and if I didn't eat like, so I'd, I'd eat a meal, like a big meal, like eight thirty, nine nine o'clock at night. Yep. Right. And then I'd like chill out for a while and then I'd go to sleep at like 10. Sure. And then I'd wake up at like two, three in the morning, hungry as like hungry. Sure. As hell. Like, <laughs> just ready to just eat. Just so hungry. Like I yeah. can't wait for breakfast. I'm so hungry, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was like, I was always, that was the hardest part for me. It was like staying asleep because I'd wake up hungry still. And oh, I'm like, how am I still yeah. hungry? You know? Totally. Um, all right. So we talked about the diet. Talked about, we, we don't know what the hell you are. You're just a freak. Sure. <laughs> Some um, kind of mutt. We talked about your injuries. I think we hit all these questions. Oh, here's one. Here's a good one. Um, so this is from Jay Predman, at Jay Predman. Old school muscle car or a new school comfort car? Like old school muscle, like a like an old SS, you know? Like, sure. Like, I'm, here's the thing, man. I'm, I'm, going, like, I'm going old yeah, for sure. Definitely. There's, there's nothing like that engine feel, power. Like it's just real, man. That's I would go old all day. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. What kind of uh, do you have? Like a car collection or anything? Are you into that at all? I I mean I have trucks or anything. My, tr- my truck has been a lot of fun. So I have a, a like a Shelby. So it's uh, like seven hundred and seventy horsepower. Yeah. Um, F one fifty. That's been that's been a lot of fun. Um, but outside of that, it's something I think I would I would like to branch off into a little bit. But again, it's probably going to be something older, you know. Yeah. Like some type, some type of, uh, like I always liked the Chevelles. Like that was one that, like, it, I don't know how I would fit or. If yeah, I'd it's hard to, to fit in them. Custom, like, do something custom. They with can the because I know that they did one for Shaq. I think. I think Shaq yeah. did one. They can do things. There's, there's ways to move the, um, the seat. Like you could take that seat bracket and move it somehow. They do. There's stuff like they re-bolt do. Like rebolt it somehow. Yeah. Or yeah. So I, that that's one that would be would be fun. I was like the the look of like a, like a, probably like a seventy two Chevelle SS would be would be fun. That's like that, fucking, yeah. That's that's like, hard to beat that. Yeah, it's hard how do you to beat, beat that? that? Yeah, it's the sound of it. You know. Yes. Yep. It's the sound, and I I always my wife and I always talk about like we need to get a car that's like not because now they're making it so they can just shut your car off Bro, from anywhere. Like I don't. Fucking, this is a whole new thing, man. I don't like, like it. I don't like it either. And and having something old where it's just like there's. Not any of the, the electronics on there. Like, just having that in case is, like, almost, it's a good idea, I think. I think so, too. Yeah. This next question, I think, is going to be big because um, I'm really interested to hear how you do it because I know how I did I did it, and I struggled with it. Um, this is from Lee Kruger 86. Um, how, do you, how have you balanced being a father and running three businesses and being a top-level athlete? So, like, the balance of being yeah. a father, a husband – because those are two different things. Being yes. a father and a husband is not the same thing. People, I think people think that's the same. No. It's not. Yeah. You have to, like, your wife needs attention, too, just like your kids need attention, and it has to be separate sometimes. Big time. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. Um, And then you have to be able to give your attention to your businesses that you run, and then you have to be able to give your attention. Most of your attention goes to your sport. Sure. Right? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, how do you balance that? Because there's not enough hours in the day, usually, to, yeah. to do it all. <sighs> this is, wow. That's That's a... A hard one. It's a hard one to answer because it, there's, you know, for me, it was a progression through all of it. Because obviously, you start competing, and that was basically what I had to do, right? Mm-hmm. Like I just competed, and that was really the end of it. So I'm training, I'm eating, I'm sleeping, I'm doing my recovery work, whatever. Then you kind of add the business side into it a little bit, and then you add in, you know, getting married, having kids. Uh, to the mix as well, and then you add another business, add another business. So then your your time and, and your demand gets spread in different ways, right? So like the, the thing that I would say with that is what I had to learn to do was to be present in the moment and be able to wear different hats throughout the day, right? So when it was time to train, when I walk in the gym, close the door, flip the lights on, whatever, I'm training. That's what I'm doing. So it's not anything else besides training. And then if I walk in and I need to handle business stuff, then I'm handling business stuff. And then if it's time to go be dad and play with the boys, then I'm putting all of that to the side. I, my phone's away, whatever, and I'm present playing with the boys. And then if it's time to be 
you know, a good husband to be with my wife, to have that time, which is something that's not easy because I feel like right now, and even right now, this is something that we've talked about with everything that's going on. Like that's the one thing that, that has, it, for whatever reason, it just gets put on the back burner and it's not good. It's not like fair. It's, because if, if like ultimately, and you, you know this too, but if, if your wife and, and you are not good, everything else will fall everything apart. else sucks yes so it's, it's not it's, fun even doing anything when you're not good no so like making <laughs> making that time is as tough as it might be to kind of cut out that time like hey let's go go on a date or let's just you know go do something fun or whatever like that is so important so that's something that even right now i'm constantly trying to work on right like where it's like hey let's just make this time for us and you know even if it's like hey we'll put the boys to bed and we'll just do something or whatever like it's it's just that type of balance. So really like the, the business side, there's, there's, there's things that I have to prioritize there from a training standpoint. Once, once I started having to wear all these different hats, that's what made it more challenging with training. Cause you know, I'm now going against, and like you said, there's always guys getting drafted and coming in. They want that spot, right? Like everybody wants to be the best. Mm -hmm. So now you add this, all of these other things to my plate and I still want to be the best at that, but I also want to be the best at this. And I want to be the best dad mm -hmm. and the best husband and the best, you know, that's just like this whole, you know, I would say be great. I want to be great at all of it, right? Like I don't want to be great at one thing. I want to be great at, at 10 things, yeah. right? So it's kind of hard to do that. But I think the best way is just, just to be able to flip that switch and be in the moment, be present in the moment. And then, and then live in that moment, right? Like don't, don't be trying to mix them all together. Like, so if you're going to do one thing, do it the best you can do in that one thing and then move on to the next thing. You yeah. Know? yeah. That's the best thing I can say with that, to be fair. <laughs> it's, there's yeah. no real, that's the thing. There's no real perfect, um, just when I think I got it fit with marriage and fatherhood, just when I think I got it figured out, oh, I'm reminded just, yeah. so quick that I don't, you no, know, and no, it's, yeah. it's like, it happened to me that happened. That was the thing about playing football was like, all I had to do was when I was like single and fucking playing in the league, it was like, I used to think like, Oh man, this, this is fucking, you know, there, there's so much shit I got to do. I don't want to do this. No one do that. And then, it, then I'm like, fuck man. Some days I'm like, that was easy. Yes. It was compared easy. to this <laughs> compared to it was like, easy. Yeah, compared yeah. to like, just, just dealing with like, um, just dealing with like, you know, I have daughters. So like yeah. just dealing with like their, their emotions, Big you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. You know, coming from where I came came from, like that, like I have had to do a lot of work just to be able to like handle their emotions. You know, I believe it. Like yeah. they're like, how do I like how how can I be there for them? You sure. know, in those moments, whenever I was like, I was told to stop being a pussy and suck it up. You know, see this is like, the thing. Yeah, you know, I, and, it, and that's that's got to be a balance too, because you know, I I have two boys, and and it's like okay, we're talking about, but I I don't know what I would do like with with daughters. I think I would make them tough. Yeah, that's, you know what I'm saying. I, mean, that's I think, what, and and to be fair, like I think women need to be tough too. Yeah, they definitely. Right? Well, like, I think women are. Yeah. If you if you've never seen a woman give birth, bro, I mean that's that is the level. toughest that's shit another, I've ever yeah, seen. Hey, hey, I'm with you. Bro. And I used to argue yeah. with, but um, because my oldest is my stepdaughter, so my wife had already given birth to a, to um to a child. Yeah. And she would tell me like, "This is fucking hard. Like, yeah. You don't get it." Yep, and I'm yep. like, "No, oh, you don't know fucking." Uh, you sure. don't know how hard it is to fucking, you know, fend off two 350 pound dudes and then sure. tackle a fucking running back. And, you know, and I would talk <laughs> shit and she'd be like, all right, motherfucker. And then I watched it. And I was like, I, I was like, I didn't, I was like beside myself. I was yes. like, I can't believe that she's able to do this. It's, it's like, I can't believe it. There's nothing like it, man. Like, it's fucking nothing incredible. Like women, women yeah. are like, I don't know. I have so much, uh, so much respect for their, their pain tolerance, you know, yes. just like, just yeah, that, yeah. yeah, you know, just their pain tolerance and their ability to like, uh, the ability, my, like my wife amazes me some days because she can like juggle so many different yes. things at once where like, when we're talking about where, how we have to wear different hats. Yeah. She will wear a fucking, she'll wear like six of them at the same time. And she's I, dealing, she's literally like working out yeah. and doing like a, having like a call with somebody Dude. and doing like something on her phone. I'm like, how the fuck are you doing that? Like, I, I, I could not agree more with that. Like I, people say all the time and, and you know, a lot of, a lot of times people point at me and say, well, I'm running the business and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And it's like, bro, you do not realize that without her, 
None of this stuff, like the, the Dude, nuts and bolts. Me? I'd don't be happen. living in a fucking van down by the river yes, if it she, wasn't for her. She says to <laughs> my wife says to me all the time, like, what would you do without me? And I say, I don't really want to think about it. I don't know. I don't, don't, don't want to know. <laughs> it wouldn't be good. It would not be <laughs> it would good. It would not be good. And I'm okay admitting that. I'm o- I'm okay saying that. Oh, yeah, me too. Totally. Yeah, like yeah. I look at any, you know, any great man throughout history, you know, ninety yeah. percent of them had a, a great woman Big you know, time. standing right Big there time. in the background doing the fucking the the I call it the silent load. Yes, you know, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. like, you know, that's that's she does all the shit that like I'm not I'm not even sure if I could, if I tried really hard if I would be good at it. Like, yeah, no, I just don't think women, I could do it. The thing is, a great woman is very very hard to find. They are very hard to find, and I'm lucky that I found such a good one that that has helped me to elevate everything that I do because she is great at all the stuff that I'm not great at. And vice versa, right? Yeah. So like I'm, I know my role, and she's got her role, and she's great at it. And that's, I think it's, it's just like a team, man, like a team. And it's Absolutely. the same thing with, like any great marriage. I feel like should be that way, right? Like if if you find somebody that that is good at all the things that you're not good at, they're only going to make you better, yeah. right? But I want to be better because of her, because like you just said. It's like she gets up and works out in the morning, then she does this and she does that. And, and I'm like, man, a life. Like, I, I need to be better just to keep up with you. Yeah. Right? I mean, like simple things like, my game up. Yeah. like I came down this morning, like she, she was kind of late getting to bed last night, you know? And I was like, I was already like half asleep, you know? And, and, um, and she comes in and then I get up early, earlier than her, come downstairs and there's fucking Christmas decorations everywhere. <laughs> Like I, all oh. I did was help her put the trees up and fucking, sure. you know, put hang some, hang some of the she crushed stuff. Yeah, and I come yeah. down and it's like fucking, Everything. you know, it's like the Christmas village in there. And I'm That's like, holy amazing. shit! Yeah, yeah. Were the elves uh, working all night or what? Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> you did this by yourself, you know? And then it's like, you know, so I, I fail sometimes in the fact of where she'll be like, she'll be like, hey, I need your help with this. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then I'll be like, if 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 it's important enough for her to ask me for help, sure, I need to make that a priority. Big time because yeah, 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 she yeah. doesn't ask for help very often, you know. Sure, so it's sure. like, if she asks me for help, you know, if it, even though it's not important to me, yeah, I need to like that's how you that's how women feel love. I think is whenever you yeah. do things that like, like even though like and I'll act like that. That's the one thing I remember her telling me one day. She, and I hate taking. I used to hate taking pictures. Yeah, I hated it. Yeah, like I never fucking. I don't have any pictures from pre marriage. Like really, like it was like here and there pictures of. Sure. it's all football They're, pictures. Most pretty guys much. are that way. Yeah, I just yeah, I just didn't yeah, like yeah. it. But she like my wife loves she because to her that's like how she like seals the memory you know it's like with the picture you know and it has to be she wants it to be a good picture that she like feels confident about to show Absolutely. people and yeah, share yeah. with the yeah, world yeah. you know so it's like not one that she has to go in there and fucking Photoshop and doctor up and shit she wants to be one that we take totally. a picture and this is what we post and we and we share it with our friends and we can put it in our house and Absolutely. like that's yeah. like because we travel a lot and we go to a lot of places and she wants and at first I would be like oh, I fucking hate doing this because we took ten of them you know I fucking sure. hate it you know let's just take one and go yeah you know and it's like she was like listen I want you to want to take the picture she's yeah. like it's not about the fact that you like it's like I can feel your energy being fucking negative about this like sure. just. So I, like I just had to retrain myself and think like okay I like taking the picture because she likes taking the picture big time yeah and it's yeah, yeah. something that's so simple yeah, yeah that like makes her happy why wouldn't I do it right yeah it was like she wanted to hang this uh, garland on the banister this morning and I have like I said I have ADHD so I get distracted super easy with like another project yeah she was like hey when you cut whenever I was like she's like where are you going I was like I'm gonna go upstairs and change um, yeah. before I take Roxy to school she goes okay um, I take Roxy to school come back. And she's like, where are you going? I was like, I'll be right back. I ran upstairs and noticed that my fl- closet floor was like fucking clothes everywhere. And I was like, sure. so I started putting those away. Oh, man. Yeah. And then I like cleaned my kitchen sink up. And then she comes <laughs> up and is like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. She's like, now you have to leave. Now I have to do this by myself. And I'm like, shit. Yes, yeah. And I was like, I'm sorry. I feel I felt terrible, you know? It's yes, like, yeah. You know, so so I get, that it's some simple things like that. If I would oh, it, it would have yeah. taken me five minutes to help her. Sure. I should have just like. Why did why wasn't I able to just do it, you know? And that's no, why you have to like make your wife I'm a priority. The, yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same way, man. It's it's like though sometimes the, the small things are bigger, bigger. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, cool. Like to me, it's it, maybe it's not a big deal to me, but to her it is. And I think that's part of marriage. And that's like mm-hmm. it's it's you know, I think guys out there don't naturally think that way, right? Like it's all I'll get to it. It's not bothering me. But it might be bothering her. Bothering right? the so shit it's, out it's of her. Like, again, <laughs> it's such a it's such a small thing, man. It's like getting up, like I'm packing the boys' lunch, and she was doing that. But I was like, hey, I want to do something to help. 
right? So now I've like, because they're, they're, for whatever reason, they're challenging to pack lunch for, right? Because yeah. they're like, our younger one, he's, he's just, our, our older one eats better, right? He'll eat almost anything. Younger one is like, nope, I tried it. I don't like it. Right? <laughs> so we've been going through this. So now I'm getting on him and like, all right, buddy, this is what we're going to do. And you're going to eat it. Right. <laughs> so we figured this balance out, but like, you know, she said to me yesterday, how much she appreciates me helping just with lunch, even though it only takes, again, what does it take? 10, 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah. So I get up a few minutes earlier. I help her with that. And it's like, it makes a big difference, but it's such a small thing that I didn't realize like, okay, she had that all on her plate because it just happens. Yeah. And to me, it's like, okay, cool. She's doing that. I'm good. But it's just those little things, man. Like, but it, again, it, it makes her day better. So it makes me feel better. Yeah. Right. So, and, and it's kind of one of these things where it's a battle because kids and eating is a battle. Oh, right? it is. It is. So, it is. You know, it's helping her win that battle, but it's these little things, but I think it's, it's, uh, again, that's, that's like the whole, like being a good husband, right? Like going back to that is like just these small things can make such a big difference. And you know, it's, it's like, Oh, happy wife, happy life. Well, that's true. Right. And there's things like meeting in the middle of, of what's important, what's not important right. and, and, and understanding like, Hey, to her, this is really important. So I'll make it a priority. And to me, it's more, it's important. So it's like this, this respect, but I think it, when you find that balance within marriage and then you can find those moments where you you could do better. Like I know I find them all the time where I know that things bother her and it may not bother me, but I do it because it bothers her. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. it's, it's such a simple thing, but it makes her happy. Right. It's and then, great. and then, yeah. and it is true. Like when you're, when your wife is fucking mad and pissed at you, like it sucks. We don't, yeah, you want that. <laughs> like, you don't it want does. That. It sucks. Yeah, yeah. You don't want that. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, cause I don't care who, uh, I think I saw this thing on Instagram. I think it was Instagram. It was, uh, it was a comedian. He was like, He's like, listen, he's like, in my house, you know, I'm the backup quarterback. Sure. All right. Like everybody's going to be a little bit concerned when I got to come in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's fair. That's like fair. if you, like I do, I drop rock. I drop my daughter off at, 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 uh, at her preschool every morning. And yeah. I take her in there and drop her off. Right. But they better not ask me any questions or give no, me any no, responsibilities. No, that's not your area. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'll yeah. get her, uh, I'll get her up and I'll get her mm-hmm. fed and I'll get her dressed yeah, I like I can't get her hair done. I sure. can't braid her hair and shit. I try. No, but no, it, yeah, it looks yeah. like uh, she looks like a homeless kid whenever I get That's done. Awesome. But That's awesome. It's like, uh, don't ask me. Like I remember a teacher one day asked me like, oh, uh, it was like at the end of the year. She was last year. She was like, is she gonna be moving to? Green room or blue? Room. I'm like, I don't fuck. I don't fucking know. Yeah, yeah. Don't ask me. Why are you asking me? <laughs> That's not me? my department. I just man. work yeah. here. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. I love it. I you know, it. so it's like, uh, it's like one of those things where she, she just like such a good. I call it. She's my CFO. Like sure. she is my. She handles literally all of the like, all the great ideas yeah. that seem like I come up with. They're usually her. That's awesome. Like she comes up with the great idea, and then yeah. I'm like, that's fucking genius. But that's it's again, it's a team, man. Team effort, exactly. And you have a great teammate, and it's that's what makes it beautiful. At the end of the day, I think you know having yeah. that teammate you can count on, pick up different things and roll together, and and uh, you know I think like you said, that's that's the perfect analogy. Is like any any great man out there is going to have a great wife too, yeah, right behind him or right beside him, helping him out with so many things that may, maybe aren't seen. You know? Yeah, and I think there's so. a lot of I think there's a lot of um, families now that have like you know. The parents have their separate, like they're they're like together but separate. You know, they have like their the the, the wife has her own career, the husband sure. has his own career, and they spend minimal time with the kids. Like I, yeah. I feel like extremely blessed that uh, you know I've been able to like I've been able to like integrate my wife into like my business. That's awesome. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like sh- we are a team. Like when we like th- like even the Wolf Untamed brand, you know, yeah. that is like that is our brand. That's yeah, yeah. we do that together, you know. Like when I have a phone call with a with a company that I'm looking to work with or we're looking to make a move here there, she's on that call. Yeah. Because yeah. she's smarter than me. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I'm not going to fucking no. act like I like I don't hey, I was a fo- yeah. I played football, man. Like sure. I don't I like I, I my my first instinct might be wrong. Yeah. So like I would like to have someone who doesn't look at it from like a that has, it's a whole different perspective, yeah. You know, and she can let me, and we can spitball on that, and we yeah. can spin that around and see see what it's gonna what is, how, what's the best plan. Because yeah. sometimes I'll commit to things, and I'm like, 
that seems like a great idea, you know? Sure. And then she's like, why the fuck what would you, you commit yeah, to yeah, that? Yeah, you know? Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, you're right. This yeah. sucks. Yes. You know? No, it's good. And I, I had to learn that lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Our first couple of years of marriage, I had to learn that lesson a couple of times where I just like, I'd be like, ah, oh, I can make the decision on my own. Like, sure. uh, I don't need you to tell me what to do. And then it fucking ends every time. Yeah. Like almost every time I regret not involving her and getting her sure. opinion on it because yeah. she probably would have had a better solution. What well, makes it, it, and again, that goes back to the team aspect of it. Like, and, and I'm the same way. Like my wife works right with me. We both do the business together. All the major calls, all the major decisions are made together. Yeah. Like, but it's, it's, it's good because again, different perspectives of situations are really good. And, and again, if you're a good team together, you balance each other out, right? Like, and she feels important, you know, like it makes her, like she yeah, feels like yeah. I have purpose in this, you know? Yeah. Uh, cause I, cause what, what, would you rather have like a wife that just is subservient and just fucking takes no. care of your kids and no, like that's what a nanny's for, you yeah, know, like yeah. that's a nanny, like yeah. that's not a wife, no, you know, no. I want a partner big time. I want a teammate, you know? So. Well, shit, Brian. I know we've been we've been going for a while, and we've talked about a lot of cool shit. And absolutely, I really man. appreciate yeah, you yeah. coming on, and I'm looking forward to continuing our training together, man. I it's love gonna, it. I love it. Fun. This was fun. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, thanks for coming, brother. Love it.